Meanwhile, kickoff approaching at West Virginia. The visitors, UConn there, the program that is with us all as, as fans. Our thoughts and best wishes with the UConn team this week, what they've had to go through. Connecticut will leave this game in Morgantown, head down to Miami for the funeral services Monday for the former Husky Jasper Howard, the receiver who one week ago this morning was preparing for a homecoming game and then later that night fatally stabbed as his teammates, fellow wide receivers Mike Smith and Kashif Moore tried to help him and, and watched him die in their arms. Just an awful story. Howard, an expected father. He would try to flee the, the violence in South Florida by going up to school in Connecticut there. Randy Edsel's had to comfort a, a shaken and saddened team this week. He spoke with Beth Moen soon after arriving today in Morgantown. Thank you. Well, Randy, what is your message this morning to your team uh, for what promises to be a very emotional day? Just play every play like it's the last play you're ever going to play. Uh, that's all we can do. Um, come out here and, and do that. And let the chips fall where they may. We've got a strong team. Um, and again, I'll be surprised if we don't do anything but that. And um, we're looking forward to getting back on the field and playing. You've talked about how football has been your refuge uh, all week long. How does it feel for game day to finally be here with the focus on the field? It feels good. And I, I know our kids feel good about that. What's going to happen today, you know, I can't tell you. But I just know that this group of young men and this group of coaches are going to come out here and, and, like I said, play every play like it's the last play they're ever going to play, coach every play like it's the last play we're ever going to coach. And um, that's all we can do. And we'll leave everybody, let her, everything else and then the good Lord's hands. All right. Thank you very much, Randy. Right, thank you. Chris, back to you. <coughs> now, Beth, thank you. The, the resilience of youth, Lee, always amazes me. But Edsel in a, in a tough position, really up here, only you can know what it's like to have to deal with the team after a tragedy. Well, that kind of happened twice with me. And, uh, after a moment of silent prayer, this is what I would say to my team. Life is about change and how you handle it. You lost a dear friend and a teammate who loved you and Connecticut football. You will never forget him. And he would want you to make him proud today. Let's go. It's a tough job. You saw Edsel trying to be so upbeat. There's a great show of support there at Morgantown from the West Virginia fans. They'll wear some blue ribbons, some blue armbands with the number six, Howard's number. And the Connecticut campus, by the way, coming together in a show of support. The student union, they'll watch the game together. It'll be a day of reflection. And you can't imagine Mike Smith, what he's gone through this week and how good it feels, you would imagine, to get back on the field and, and play a game. Connecticut and West Virginia is coming up. Noon Eastern time, a game on ESPNU. Kickoff also approaching. The Yukon Huskies step off the bus in Morgantown today with sadness in their hearts. Randy Edsel's team takes the field for the first time since the death of defensive back Jasper Howard. Jazz may be gone, but his memory will be everywhere today. There is grief, but also determination to play this game with passion because that's the way Jazz would want it. Welcome to ESPNU College Football. We're in Morgantown, West Virginia today for a Big East game between the Connecticut Huskies and the 23rd ranked West Virginia Mountaineers. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to West Virginia. I'm Clay Matvick. Jasper Howard was a talented 20-year-old student athlete at the University of Connecticut. Early last Sunday morning on campus outside of the student union, he was stabbed. Two of his teammates held him in the final moments of his life. Hours later, he was pronounced dead at a Hartford hospital. And his head coach, Randy Edsel, had the painful duty of passing on the terrible news to his family and later to the team. As police continue to investigate, this team has to press on for the first time without the guy they simply knew as Jazz. This week, we talked with his coach and with the teammates who knew him best. Life is precious. You never know when it could all end. Why jazz, you know? He was too good of a person to be taken away from this earth this early. The 
he's a part of my blood forever. That's one person I'm never gonna forget in my lifetime. He was the life of the party. He was dancing, moving, singing. He really loved life. Jasper will never be forgotten by any of us. Let's bring in Beth Mowens. She has followed this story all week. Beth. Thank you, Clay. Well, it's been a very emotional week and morning of preparation for these two teams as they get ready for the game today. But we talked with both coaches this week, and they said once that coin gets tossed, it's time to play football. In fact, Howard's stepfather, Henry Williams, is the one that set the tone early in the week on Monday when he addressed the UConn team and the entire community and told them that the best way to pay tribute to Jasper was to play on and compete hard. In the locker room, met with all the players, and I really just, you know, it just came over me. I just spoke to them, you know, and told them, you know, to make this season, the rest of this season, play for Jazz, because they know the type of player he was. He loved football. He lived football. But play this season and play your heart out for Jazz. Because he's going to be up there looking down, and that's going to satisfy him. That'll make him happy. And emotions running high for the West Virginia football team as well as they are in front of their home crowd on homecoming weekend. And the Mountaineers are ready to take the field. We see a lot of that today is... Jasper Howard is in the thoughts and the prayers of so many college football fans today. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this last week's activities and experiences translate to the game here this afternoon. Big game for both teams. West Virginia 5-1 undefeated in Big East play. Sold out homecoming crowd here today. This school has been so gracious to the Yukon Huskies. College football fans from all over the country are behind the Huskies as they take the field now. Now we join West Virginia public address announcer Travis Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please stand and join the University of Connecticut, West Virginia University, and the Big East Conference in a moment of silence to remember and honor the life of University of Connecticut's junior cornerback, Jasper Howard. Thank you.
We're waiting on the traditional coin flip, which is coming after a great gesture at midfield. Both teams shaking hands. That is not customary. That was uh, offered up by West Virginia head coach Bill Stewart. And now the traditional coin flip. Connecticut has won the toss right to the third of the second half. You want to receive the ball. Which way do you want to kick? Okay. Connecticut up here. West Virginia. Joined now by Dave Diaz and Fonte, and motions running high on both sides. Both teams thinking about a lot as they get ready for a very big game in the Big East today. It certainly is a big game in Big East Conference play. And for Connecticut, they find themselves at one and one and cannot afford another loss in Big East play. West Virginia finds themselves at one and oh, and both teams find themselves chasing Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Cincinnati at two and oh, Pittsburgh and three and oh. So this game has major implications towards that Big East Conference title. Shaw, UConn won the toss. They have deferred. West Virginia will have the football first. Very powerful moments leading up to this game here today. Certainly, and it's really a mystery as to how UConn will respond to the events of the last week and how that translates uh, to football in this game here this afternoon. There's Randy Edsel. This week, he has been more than just a football coach. Here's a look at Mark Rogers. He is back deep to return for West Virginia. Tavon Austin will be back deep as well. Desi Cullen will kick off one of the four captains for this UConn team. He has been an emotional leader this week as well. And we are underway in Morgantown. And it will be Tavon Austin from the three. Good return. One man to beat. Tavon Austin. Touchdown, West Virginia. Eight yards. Tavon Austin, a freshman, they say he can catch like uh, he can run like Devine, and he's a guy that's got big time speed. They're trying to find different ways to get him the football. You see what kind of speed he has. Once he gets to the edge, there is nobody that's going to catch him. Fourteen seconds into this game, West Virginia has gone in front. Tyler Bittenkurt on for the extra point. And it's 7-0 West Virginia. Tavon Austin, a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown on the opening play. And that's how we start on an emotional day in Morgantown. Traditions here at West Virginia and a great start for the Mountaineers as they take the early lead seven to nothing on a 98 yard opening kickoff return by Tavon Austin the longest kickoff return for a touchdown by a West Virginia player since 2001 what a start to this one when coaches say he's a blend between Jock Sanders and Noel Devine 
That is very high praise for a freshman. You saw what kind of game breaking speed he possesses. This is the sixth meeting between Connecticut and West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead this all time series five games to none. And UConn already in a situation where they're going to have to come from behind. Josh Leiter set to kick off now for West Virginia. Jordan Todman and Robbie Fry back deep for the Huskies. Fry is a dangerous return man himself. And this kick is short. It will be Fry. He fields it on the run at about the 15. Takes a hit, still on his feet across the 30. And down at the 33 yard line, an 18 yard return for Robbie Fry. And we'll get our first look at the UConn offense. The Huskies 4-2, and 1-1 one one in the Big East. They easily could be 6-0. and oh. They had late leads on both North Carolina and Pittsburgh. And Cody Endress is the quarterback. Zach Frazier won the starting job in camp but hurt his knee in week two, and it's been Endress ever since. And Endress is a guy they feel is really starting to play well, especially the last few weeks. Little flea flicker on the opening play. Dixon back to Endress. Going up top. Incomplete. Overthrows Dwayne Difton. Second down. Here's a look at the impact players, Dave, for UConn. Yeah, you look at that tandem at running back for UConn, Andre Dixon and Jordan Todman. They're going to be key. They've got to establish the running game to control the time of possession for Connecticut. Lawrence Wilson leads the Big East in tackles. He's going to be going sideline to sideline trying to slow down this West Virginia offense. Second down for Connecticut on their opening series. And it's Andre Dixon. He'll keep it this time and gets it across the 35. Working hard. And he'll pick up five. Sidney Glover, the strong safety in on the stop. And the starting lineups for both teams running across the top of your screen. UConn has won three of its last four games. They have hopes of making their third straight bowl appearance. Of course, uh, everyone... Interested to see how they respond after such a difficult week here today. On third and five, Andrews Cox, now he's going to run. And takes a hit at the 38. Gain of about one. Stepping up to make the stop, the nose tackle, Chris Neal. And UConn goes three and out. Yeah, Chris Neal is a guy that's going to be asked to anchor the middle for West Virginia's defense. The number one rush defense in the Big East. They do a great job, big improvement this year of stuffing the run. And that's something uh, that UConn's made a living off. So now Desi Cullen comes on to punt. The leading punter in school history. Brandon Hogan back for West Virginia. And this is going to bounce inside the 10 and through the end zone. It'll be a touchback. First down and 10. At the 20 for West Virginia when we come back. A good start for West Virginia. A lot of emotions down on that field. We're back in Morgantown in a moment. There's Tavon Austin, the exciting rookie out of Dunbar High School in Baltimore, Maryland. A 98-yard kickoff return, the opening play of the game. We talk about breakaway speed, and that's something West Virginia always has. They found a new young guy in Austin. You can see the breakaway speed. Big time play on special teams in West Virginia. A very fast starting offensive football team, and that's how it started here today. A kickoff return for 98 yards. And now we'll see the West Virginia offense for the first time. Quarterback by Jared Brown. First down and 10 from their own 20. They lead it 7 to nothing. Brown out of the gun. And he'll look to throw, and it's complete. Caught it to 24. That's going to be Brad Starks for a gain of seven. And Dave, how does UConn respond now? Already down a touchdown. Well, defensively, they got to find a way to stop West Virginia. It's what they need to do coming into the game. West Virginia's had a lot of success against them in recent years. Uh, they've got to play sound, disciplined defense. Second down and three. Hand out this time, Noel Devine, and he slips down. He tried to reverse field, and he's dropped for a loss of two. Greg Lloyd Jr., the middle linebacker, is able to come in and make the stop. It'll bring up third down. 
Jarrett Brown last week suffered a mild concussion on a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit against Marshall, but he has been cleared to play this week. Yeah, he's 7-1 as a starter and really taking his football game to the next level in terms of efficiency as a quarterback and big playability. On third down and five, looking to throw again, lobs it up on the far sideline, batted away nicely at the last moment by Dwayne Gratz, one of the cornerbacks in that UConn secondary, and now West Virginia has to punt for the first time. Well, in West Virginia, that's one of the things how their offense has evolved under Coach Stu. They've begun to add a vertical element to their offense instead of the east-west option game. And here's a great example of that right now to Alric Arnett up the sideline, taking a shot, stretching the field, and making sure defenses can't just zone in on their spread option offense. So now Scott Kozlowski comes on. He's standing at his own 10. He leads the Big East in punting. Two of the best punters in the Big East on display here today. That one bounces at the 42 and fielded there by Nick Williams. And uh, it's a 35-yard punt for Scott Kozlowski, the senior out of West Palm Beach. Special teams, a couple of very good teams in that regard here today. This could have been uh, scary there for UConn. Yeah, that's the way to find a way to secure the ball. You got to field it or you got to run like heck away from it. Andre Dixon, the lone setback on first down for UConn. He'll get it here. And straight ahead, he'll pick up about four. Dixon, arguably the offensive MVP for the Huskies. He's rushed for 616 yards, seven touchdowns. And uh, he has really matured in his senior year. Yeah, he has. And it's starting to reflect not only on the field, but off the field as well. He's got a sense of urgency about the way he runs in his senior year. And that physicality is something UConn's going to need here today. On second and seven, a little play fake. Endra sets up, throws, and incomplete. Well covered in the secondary. Intended for Marcus Easley. Brandon Hogan was there. And Marcus Easley is a guy that's starting to give Endress some confidence back there, be, being his go-to guy the last couple of weeks, over 100 yards receiving against Pitt and last week against Louisville. So after a three and out on their last drive, here's UConn facing a third and seven. They're 42% on third down this year. Endress has time to throw. Over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Kashif Moore. Kashif Moore, one of the players very close to Jasper Howard, playing with a heavy heart today. And another punting situation for UConn. And coming back out is Cullen. And that's a time right there. UConn had a chance to convert. Couldn't quite get it done. Cullen's first punt, 61 yards. Fair catch called for here at the 19 by Brandon Hogan. This time a 37-yard boot, and West Virginia will get it back. They lead it 7 to nothing. We'll see if UConn can regroup on what is a tough day all around for that team. ESPNU College Football brought to you by State Farm. To us, nothing's more important than being there. Back at Milan Pushkar Stadium on homecoming weekend in Morgantown, West Virginia. Great start for the Mountaineers. They lead it 7-0 after taking the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Everyone remembering Jasper Howard lost his life early last Sunday morning. UConn coming into this game emotionally drained and now down in this game as West Virginia takes over. First down and 10 at their own 19. Quick fire. Brown to Jock Sanders, his first touch of the day. And he is going to be dropped for a loss of one. Let's take a look at the West Virginia impact players. Well, it all starts with number seven and number nine is a game of catch me if you can with Noel Devine and Jock Sanders. They account for a majority of the offense of West Virginia. Then defensively, it's Chris Neal, the nose guard, that's going to have to hold up against that UConn running game, making sure he demands double teams. Second down and 11. The give to Noel Devine. 
Tries to swing it to the near side. No gain. Well covered. There's Lawrence Wilson. The weak side linebacker leads the Big East in tackles. Yeah, with, with 66 tackles and 34 solo. And Lawrence Wilson and that UConn defense, one thing they got to do here this afternoon is be great tacklers because if you miss a tackle against Jock Sanders or Noel Devine, they have the ability to take it to the house at any moment. So now third down and 12, the uh, starting lineups rolling across the top of your screen. West Virginia 46% this season on third down. That's first in the league. Brown feeling some pressure now. Steps up and down he goes. Brown is dropped by Greg Lloyd Jr. and Lawrence Wilson. It's a gain of just one, and the punting unit will come out again. The defense looking real good on that series for UConn. Yeah, and this is the level they're going to have to play with, and they've played with for most of the season so far. They've had problems late in games in the fourth quarter, but early on, they are a well-coached, well-disciplined defensive football team, and so far, they're using great leverage in terms of containing the playmakers of West Virginia. Both offenses have sputtered out of the gate here so far. Four combined drives, four three and outs. Kozlowski on, he's standing inside his own five. Good snap, has time, good kick. Backing off here, Robert McClain. From inside the 30. And he's down at the 33. Let's go to Rob Stone in the Sports Center U studio. All right, we stay in the Big East. Number 20, Pittsburgh on the board first versus USF. Bill Stull. Short little pass to Mike Cruz. Wrapped up an 11 play, 80 yard drive over six minutes and 10 seconds. 7 0 Panthers. All right, Rob, thank you very much. Pitt, three wins already in the league play. Going to number four, and Dave Wonstadt has that team playing very well right now. Here's Jordan Todman, his first carry of the day, and it's a good one. Out close to midfield. A 16-yard rip for Jordan Todman. I'll tell you, he and Dixon make quite a one-two punch for UConn. Yeah, they certainly do, and Dixon gives him power inside. And here's Todman. You see his ability to get to the edge, and then he has the speed and juke ability to break big plays for UConn offensively. And this time, a lot of running room as he tried to pick his way on the near side. It's going to be a gain of one. Todman averaging just under 84 rushing yards per game. And when you take into account what Dixon has done, he ranks 20th in the nation at just under 103 yards per game. Losing Donald Brown because he went on to the NFL. They haven't lost much. No, they haven't because they've got two different guys that play different roles in their offense, and they believe in running the football. On second and eight, play action pass thrown out to the right side. Caught by Anthony Sherman. The fullback stays on his feet. He is going to be short of the first down marker. Brandon Hogan has been busy already today. Brings him down. It's a gain of five. Anthony Sherman, a fullback. Fullbacks are kind of like offensive guards in the backfield, and Sherman kind of does. Uh, I don't know what kind of move that was, but it was very effective <laughs> in slow mo. But he picked up some big yardage to make a more manageable third down for UConn. Randy Edsel going for it on third down and three. Caught first down. Inside the 30, down at the 27. That is Ryan Griffin, the tight end, a rookie starter. Big target, 6'6", 240 pounds. Yeah, he just came back against Pitt earlier this season. He's a guy that helps their offense. A tight end can be a quarterback's best friend, too, in terms of getting those easy completions, a big target, and that time a critical third down conversion for UConn on their third, pos third possession of the game. First down from the 26. They go back to the ground. And it's Todman again. He'll pick up two. This is an important series for UConn, especially after taking that punch in the mouth right on the opening play of the game. Yeah, it certainly is. They've got to get some kind of rhythm offensively. And, and Cody Endress and company, I'm glad to see them get back to the running the football. I like being aggressive, taking shots down the field. But UConn clearly has an identity, and it starts with running the football. Second down and eight. Endress 
Looks left, now right, and it's complete again. And again, it's his fullback, Anthony Sherman. He's got the first down. He steps out at the 12. And again, it's Hogan in on the stop after a gain of 11. They're just going to run Sherman out in the flat. He goes right away. Andrus knows he's looking for him again, fast enough to get to the edge and pick up the first down. Hard to argue with the numbers of Cody Andrus coming into this game. He has completed 66% of his passes. First down and 10 now as UConn is inside the red zone. Dixon hit at the line and gets inside the 10. He'll pick up a couple. And you see the change of pace. Dixon, they're going to try and get him the ball. They start getting in that red zone in kind of the tougher area to run it where you got to be more physical. He is a guy, like I said earlier, is running with a sense of urgency and it's really paid dividends for UConn. Dixon last week had 33 rushes, 153 yards, and three touchdowns. Looking for the equalizer on this drive. UConn, 88% this season inside the red zone. On second and eight, Dixon. It's a down to the five. Dixon was tremendous last week. 153 yards and three touchdowns. And we got a third down coming up. Homecoming weekend here at Milan Pushkar Stadium in Morgantown. It's been an emotional day already. UConn with heavy hearts coming into this game after the loss of Jasper Howard. And now Randy Edsel wants a timeout, trying to get the officials' attention and does. Well, critical third down possession inside the red zone for UConn. And Randy Edsel want to make sure they have the right personnel grouping in for what they want to accomplish. And you'll see it started out on this drive, running the football. It's what UConn does. They're great at it. Then some play action pass off it, find their tight end, Griffin over the middle. And then they're going to find Sherman, the fullback, out in the flat once more. Two receptions by him on that drive. Ninth play of the drive coming up. This drive started at their own 33. Cody Endress also started the West Virginia game last year in East Hartford. He was picked off three times. Really excited to have a better day here today. And West Virginia is the third ranked red zone defense in the Big East. Third down and four. They fake the reverse to the end zone. Touchdown, Jordan Todman from five yards out. UConn and Randy Edsel and company, I tell you what, they run the football. They fake the reverse. It faked out everybody almost on West Virginia's defense as they brought it back around to Todman, took it into the end zone for the touchdown. That's nice creativity in a critical area of the field on a critical down. Coming on for the extra point now is David Taggart. And it's good, and we are tied up at seven. Excellent drive for the UConn Huskies. Is their offense showing signs of coming to life? And there's Todd and ended up in the end zone. And again, I, I love the creativity in the end zone. There's Randy Edsel saying, all right, boys, here we go. This is football now. That was a big time score for Connecticut at a critical time. And it came on third down. Those possessions uh, at critical situations of the game that usually determine outcomes when it comes to possession and points. That third down was an example of both those things. Nine plays, 67 yards. Todman with his seventh touchdown of the season and the tenth of his career. Like I said, a couple of three and outs on their first two possessions, but it was a well put together drive. Well, it was. It started with them, you know, running the football, uh, getting the ball to Dixon and Todman and establishing that running game. Protection so far by the offensive line has been outstanding against a very stout West Virginia defense. Now the West Virginia kickoff team. Back on the field. Remember on the opening play of the game, Tavon Austin took it back 98 yards. He's standing at his own three-yard line as Desi Cullen has it teed up. They'll try to keep it away from Austin. They're going to put it in the end zone. 
And he gave it a thought, but decides to kneel down first down and 10 at the 20. Earlier, we had a chance to talk to head coach Randy Edsel of UConn. Here's what he had to say about Jasper Howard. This is one of those life lessons. It, you know, you, it's, it's sad and it's uh, tragic, but you know what? We all have to move forward and we all have to go on with our lives. And that's not being cruel when you say that. But we have to deal with it, but we still have to go on. Playing is the best medicine. Yeah, football has always been uh, a refuge for anyone that's ever played the game. So you step on that field, it captures everything that's in your heart and mind. Jared Brown throwing to the near side on first down. It is caught by Alric Arnett. One of the big play threats for West Virginia. He caught a 33-yard touchdown last week. He picks up six there as the lineups continue to roll across the top of your set. And West Virginia makes them so hard to defend as they force you to defend the whole field. They average seven yards on first down. Uh, that's incredible. And yeah, they've got a lot of weapons. Second down and four. And this time it is Noel Devine. A couple. Devine running with purpose. And it, it seems, you know, based on what we've seen this year from Devine, he's better than ever. Yeah, he certainly has. He's always been skilled, athletic, extremely fast. But this year, he's probably matured as a player, and it's really allowing him to blossom on and off the field as a team leader, as a guy that wants to help this team lead to take him where they want to go. Let's see what they do here on third and two. Inside handoff to the fullback, Ryan Clark. He's got a first down and more, a gain of five. And Clark is the short yardage back. That's exactly how they use him. And he is the real reason that they have been so good on third down this year. He has an area of concern from last season, and that's what happens when you're kind of an east to west football team sometimes, is how do you, do, what do you do in third and two, third and short situations when you need to punch the ball in a vertical manner? That was the first first down today for the Mountaineers. Divine to the left of Brown. He'll throw it over the middle, and it's complete. Caught by Jock Sanders. And... Speaking of guys having good years, Jock Sanders may be having his best season yet. He leads the team and the Big East with 46 catches now for well over 400 yards. And they use him in so many different ways as a wide receiver in the slot, on reverses, bubble screens, anywhere where they get him the ball in space because he's so dangerous. Tavon Austin back on the field now. He'll go in motion. Couple of quick first downs. Now Brown throwing on first down here. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Boy, he took a shot from Jesse Joseph, the defensive end, a savvy rookie who was having a big year. Well, it starts with, it starts with coverage in the secondary. Look, good protection. He pumps one way, but look, coverage downfield. He's trying to go back to the other side of the field, and there comes Jesse Joseph around the corner to make the sack. You know, he is doing well for a team that lost two defensive ends to the NFL, getting a lot from a true freshman. Second down and 10. Brown rolling out, pressure, throws on the run, and what a hit! Robert Vaughn, free safety, all Big East, really threw his body around on that play. That time Connecticut brings pressure. They're not a big pressure team, but they bring it, they force Brown out of the pocket, and what do they do? They back it up with coverage and a big time hit by Robert Vaughn. That, that's, that's putting it right on the lips. Allow me to introduce myself. I love it. Ryan Clark's going to be feeling that one for a while. It's another third down conversion attempt. West Virginia one of three today. Brown. Has a nice pocket, throws it over the middle. Intercepted. It's Robert Vaughn. Into West Virginia territory, down at the 44. A 21-yard return after the pick for Vaughn. And you see Brown in the pocket again. Good protection by the O-line that time, but after he's been hit and pressured a few times, he's going to deliver this ball high over the middle. You see him, the clock's ticking in his head. Again, lets it hang a little bit too long down the middle of the field. And Robert Vaughn is there playing free safety and center fielder. 
And Robert Vaughn's having an outstanding season himself, too. He was Big East Defensive Player of the Week versus Pitt. Had two interceptions, one for a touchdown. On first down, it's Andre Dixon for Connecticut. Get about a yard. So Vaughn with the interception. That is the sixth interception thrown by Jared Brown this year. And for Vaughn, that's his fourth. They like Brown's arm. And they like him as an athlete. Just made a bad decision there. Yeah, it's, he hasn't made too many of them this year. He's really been a very efficient at that position. But it's Vaughn making a play over the middle, leading his eyes. Play fake. Endress throws it out. Again, it's the fullback, Anthony Sherman. I don't know that Sherman knew that this was in his job description, but he's caught three passes already today. Well, West Virginia's a big-time zone defense. They're trying to spread that zone out, stress it to the max of the field, and the fullback becomes an integral part of that, working the flats and those short areas. Now at third and six, as this West Virginia crowd gets on the backs, these UConn Huskies, they've been so supportive this week, but this is a big game in the Big East, and these fans know it. Andrus with time, incomplete. Sidney Glover in the coverage. Kashif Moore couldn't haul it in. And again, West Virginia decides to pressure Andrus as well. And that time, UConn couldn't come up with the play. You got to try and make that catch on third down. You're at the sticks. Make a play for your quarterback and your offense. Here's Desi Cullen on. He'll punt from his own 48. Brandon Hogan calling for the fair catch at the 10. And that's where the Mountaineers will have it, a 30-yard kick for Cullen. Turnovers have been a real problem this year for West Virginia. That was their 18th turnover, that interception thrown by Jared Brown. But you can, UConn can't capitalize. Yeah, and that's not, not so much a force in the turnovers. What do you do with it? And, and again, third down, a critical situation. Extend the possession, get yourself down in position, to score some points off it. There's Cody Endress talking with his offensive line and his receivers. So now Jared Brown, after waiting patiently behind Pat White the last three seasons, he's the starter for the Mountaineers. Play clock down to seven. Turns, hands off. This is Noel Devine. And he is yet to get loose, but you know it's only a matter of time. Well, so far, this UConn defense, I tell you what, they're squeezing everything from the outside in, playing with the right leverage, in the right gaps, right responsibility, and kind of forming a net around these two dynamic players for West Virginia. Devine so far, four carries, just one yard. They're keeping him bottled up. On second down and nine, it's Devine again. This time stays on his feet. Good little burst after the initial hit. He's built low to the ground, 5'8", 176. Yeah, great feet, great balance. And this time, UConn there to make the play. Lloyd ducks his head right at contact. Boy, you've got to see what you hit, wrap up, because if you miss Noel Devine too many times, you're going to pay the price. Third down and four. One of four today on third down. Out of the gun, Brown feeling the heat. Gets away, and he's going to take it himself. First down and more. Down at the 42. Jared Brown does not run by design very often, but when he has to run, he's very good at it. That's a gain of 24. And you saw his ability to avoid the rush because Lindsey Winton comes off the corner. He's got a free shot at him. Let's him break to contain. And Jarrett Brown, he is a big, strong athlete. Not too many designed runs coming into the game. Only had a 50 rushing attempts. Probably one or two have been called plays. So when things break down, down the field, he's not afraid to tuck it and run. First down from the 42. We'll put it in the hands of Devine again. And again, uh, met immediately at the front. That time, Jory Johnson, the strong side linebacker, who's in for Scott Lutris, who suffered a stinger in week two. Boy, losing Lutris, UConn lost a lot defensively. That's a guy that whenever he's healthy and playing a full season, he's uh, getting over 100 tackles, usually leading this team. They've had other guys step up, Lawrence Wilson, Greg Lloyd, 
and now Joey Johnson's the next guy in line. Final seconds of the first quarter. An opening kickoff brought back for a touchdown by West Virginia. And then a 67-yard scoring drive for UConn. That's the scoring from the first quarter. An emotional start to this day. Heavy hearts. But a good game so far after one we're tied. And Randy Edsel's proud of the way his team respond after getting down early. We're tied at seven after one. Let's check in with Beth Mowens. Well, in fact, Clay, Randy Edsel has been very proud of the way the entire athletic department at Connecticut has responded in helping this football team get through all the emotions that they've been feeling this week. And one of the more poignant moments before the team departed stores yesterday to make the trip down to West Virginia. Players from all of the other 23 teams on the UConn campus got together to give them a proper send off a very touching moment for Randy Edsel and the players. It shows solidarity amongst the, the student athletes, uh, you know, at UConn to come out of our facility building and to to walk down uh, the road there uh, Memorial Stadium and have all the athletes uh, that were there, uh, you know, clapping and coaches. Uh, for the kids, and then uh, I believe it was our women's track team uh, in Memorial Stadium lined up with a number, you know, made a number six in the stands. And uh, um, I, I didn't go through the line. I kind of just took the kids to the front of it and let them go, you know, walk down to where the buses were and my car was there. But it was, it was very touchy. Great support all around during a tough time, but everyone really followed Randy Edsel's strength and leadership this week. And it just tells you how many people that Jasper Howard really touched not only on the football team but in the whole university and athletic department. West Virginia to start the quarter second down and nine at their own 43 yard line. Jared Brown four of eight 22 yards passing and an interception. Gives it to Noel Devine and he just cannot get loose. That's going to be no game. Let's go to the studio and Rob Stone. Guys, Pittsburgh quarterback Bill Stull, a perfect 8 for 8 and 114 yards already. Tack on two touchdowns while we're at it. Here he finds his tight end, Jonathan Baldwin, not one of the Baldwin brothers. 40 yard score, 14 0 Pitt. So Pittsburgh trying to remain undefeated. Out to a 3 0 start in Big East play. They get a timeout on the field called by Connecticut. And we're going to step aside as well. A third down and nine coming up for West Virginia. Tied at seven early on here in the second quarter. Fourteen thirty to play in the first half, tied at seven. First quarter storylines: Tavon Austin getting the game started with a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. This crowd went nuts. But then UConn, after a couple of three and outs, put together a great drive to tie it up. Well, they got the uh, their running game going again. That's where it all begins for UConn. But West Virginia, zero points offensively, and they are a fast-starting team, outscoring their opponents. 59 to 30 in the first quarter, first quarter of this season. Third down and nine. Brown under pressure gets away. Lost the football. Bounces back into his hands and he steps out of bounds. Well short of the first down. It's been a problem at times for Jared Brown this year. But well, the problem starts with Lawrence Wilson blitzing right up the middle. Noel Devine misses him. But look how strong Jared Brown is to shake that off. Boy, you got to secure that football when you're scrambling with it. UConn defense is on the attack early. Already one turnover for the Mountaineers today, nearly a second. Williams and McLean back deep to return this kick. This will be the third punt today for Scott Kozlowski. Standing at his own 28. Good punt. And another fair catch called for by McLean at the 12. A 44-yard punt. Jeff Hathaway, the UConn athletic director, joins us when we come back in Morgantown.
14 even to play here in the second quarter, tied at seven. Beth Moen's down on the field with a special guest. Thank you very much, Clay. I'm with UConn Athletic Director Jeff Hathaway. And Jeff, uh, certainly uh, uh, an unlikely set of circumstances that you have had to deal with at uh, UConn this week. What has impressed you about the way that uh, your entire athletic department has really rallied around each other? Well, I think the thing that I'm most proud about, Beth, is how our university community has come together, how quickly and how strongly we've all embraced this, this situation. And, and within the division of athletics, our coaches and student athletes have just been fantastic and reaching out to our football students, our coaches, and helping them work through this. Can you speak particularly to the job that Randy Edsel has done and really being at the forefront all week? Well, there, there, no one gets taught how to handle these situations, and Randy has stepped up strong and walked his football program, and frankly, <laughs> so many other people through this tragedy over the course of the week. Jeff, you also wanted to talk about the support that you've gotten from the, the rest of the Big East Conference, and in particular from West Virginia this week. Well, it's been amazing to all of us, the support we've received throughout the country, particularly in the Big East. West Virginia has been tr tremendous today with the moment of silence, the handshake, the card that's on the side of the tunnel here that all the students have signed. They've been special to help us in this situation. All right, thank you very much, Jeff. We appreciate it. The athletic director at Connecticut, and we do want to mention that the university is setting up a couple of funds, uh, one of them uh, in Jasper's honor for a UConn football player, and another fund to help provide for the uh, family of Jasper Howard as well as his unborn child. Guys. Thank you, Beth. Great leadership. Jeff Hathaway, and of course, as we've talked about before, Randy Edson. Yeah, you want to talk about a guy who's playing leadership at critical time. It's Randy Edson. Another third down, third and five. UConn has gone three and out on its last three series. Andrus has time, fires to the near sideline. It is going to be close to a first down. As the tight end Ryan Griffin hauls it in. And it's good for UConn to have him back. He's coming off a sore back for a few weeks. And it all starts with protection. Look at that offensive line fighting. It's only a three-man rush. But watch the big tight end Ryan Griffin know where the stick was and make sure he picks up the first down. And they got it. So Griffin picks it up. Doesn't look like a redshirt freshman, does he? No, he's a he's a good looking tight end. 6'6, 250 pounds. Go back to the ground game. And that's Jordan Todman. We have seen an equal amount of Todman and Dixon so far today, and that's pretty much the game plan for the Yukon Huskies. Yeah, they go with whatever guy has a hot hand or they like Dixon to pound it inside and Toddman to try and get to the perimeter. We lost Donald Brown. First round pick of the Indianapolis Colts, of course, led the nation in rushing last year. And it's Toddman again. Great effort. He's going to be close to a first down. A gain of seven. Todman now seven carries, 39 yards and a touchdown. Well, Todman may be the guy they like to use on the perimeter and only 190 pounds. Uh, but you saw his tenacity in terms of running up the middle, little lead draw, and he fought and clawed his way to almost the first down marker. So Todman comes out, Dixon comes back in, and man down, Anthony Sherman, the fullback who has been involved a lot in the passing game for UConn so far. Let's get an update on that South Florida pit game with Rob Stone. Bill Stoll with two touchdown passes for Pittsburgh 14 0 with the Bulls come back an eight play 80 yard drive capped by Mike Ford's three yard run on his first touch of the day. It's now a seven point affair just north of you guys in Pittsburgh. Still taking care of Anthony Sherman on the field. We're in Morgantown, West Virginia. Homecoming weekend for the Mountaineers. We're tied at seven with 12 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Alongside Dave Diaz Infante, former Denver Bronco, I'm Clay Matvick. It's been a tough week for the UConn Huskies, but they have responded here, showing a lot of uh, strength. Bouncing back from, from an opening kickoff return for a touchdown by West Virginia. Yeah, they certainly have. And always starts with these two guys for them in the backfield. Replacing uh, Dixon, the outstanding running back. I mean, Donald Brown, the outstanding running back that went to the Indianapolis Colts. These two guys have, have made up for the absence of a great player. Third down and one. 
Dixon has it up for the first down. As he gets it out to the 35, he got one. That's all he needed. Edsel couldn't be happier with Andre Dixon. Having a solid season, one credit away from graduation. You'll remember last year he was in Edsel's doghouse after some off-field trouble. And, of course, Donald Brown was going great guns, so they weren't about to mess around with that success. He'll check out. First down and 10. Todman back in. Endress throws to the near sideline. Nobody home incomplete. He has PNU's coverage of college football continuing later today as the Louisville Cardinals take on the fifth-ranked and undefeated Cincinnati Bearcats. It's the keg of nails game. Comes your way at 3.30 Eastern time. College football on ESPNU HD. BCS standings, the first of the season released this week. And Florida's on top. Alabama number two. And, of course, in the other polls, it's the other way around. Alabama's on top. Florida number two. Yeah, it is. And look at Cincinnati at number five. That's a good football team. Not close to the 40. It's Jordan Todman. And we have heard that Tony Pike will not play in that game today for the Bearcats. Yeah, he won't be down, but I tell you what, last year Cincinnati wins the Big East with five different quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, and so Brian Kelly has a way of uh, having guys behind him, and, and their defense has played outstanding, especially after replacing all the starters that they lost from a year ago. This is already the eighth attempt at a third down conversion today for UConn. Third down and six. Endress, pressure, hit as he throws, incomplete. And UConn will have to punt. Let's go down to Beth Mowens for an injury update. Oh yeah, fullback Anthony Sherman we just saw leaving the field and heading back into the Connecticut locker room. It was instrumental in their touchdown drive earlier. The report is a hip injury for Sherman, but they do expect him to return. Clay? All right, Beth. Well, that's a blow for UConn, who had so much success on that long touchdown drive, and Sherman was a big part of it. On the offense, number 12. Quarterback was in the pocket. There was no eligible receiver in the area. Lost it down. Fourth down. And so the <laughs> intentional grounding on the Huskies, Randy Edsel in the ears of the officials. And there's Randy Edsel. Look, he is not happy with that call. I think UConn's trying to set up a screen. And Andrews just tried to throw it away. Officials didn't see uh, Dixon in the area and called him for intentional grounding. Sanders and Hogan back deep to return this punt. And it's low. It takes a bounce. A decent UConn roll inside the 35-yard line. And dead at the 28. A 45-yard punt for Desi Cullen. Again, one of the better punters in the Big East. Let's look at this uh, UConn defense today and talk about it. I mean, they are impressive. They have been good again this week so far. Yeah, they've pressured more than they typically do, making sure that Jarrett Brown feels bodies around them at all times. And there's Vaughn being a ball hawk down the middle of the field. Offensively, they weren't able to turn that into points. But I like the plan that UConn has had. They are very sound on the defensive side of the ball. Jared Brown will test that UConn defense here on first down. Flushed out of the pocket. He'll run. And walks out after a gain of six. That UConn defense holding teams to 18 points per game. 312 total yards per game. Both uh, ranked among the best in the country. They rank 28th in total defense. And like I said, they are well coached. Uh, their spacing is always well good. You never get them out of position. Right now, the big thing they got to do is make sure they keep Jarrett Brown in the pocket. Only, only plays he's made against their defense is when he breaks contain and runs with the football. They've already forced West Virginia into a turnover once today. They had four forced turnovers last week. On second down and four, Brown hands off. Noel Devine hit at the line. And again, no gain. Devine has had that happen to him quite a few times today. He's had uh, eight carries for a total of seven yards. Yeah, it looked like there might have been a mix-up. Jared Brown turned to hand it off one way and then flipped back around to hand it off to Devine. I'm not sure if that was by design or not. But either way, UConn's defense was there to stuff it. Devine averaging 6.4 yards per carry. 
Eight straight runs so far by West Virginia. Now they'll throw, and it's Jock Sanders. And he's got a first down out close to midfield. A gain of 12 for Sanders, who ranks 10th all-time in receptions at West Virginia. And they've got to find a way to get Jock Sanders the ball. He is too dynamic, too explosive. He just runs a little speed out route. Defender coming from the inside. They've got no chance to catch him. Junior out of St. Pete, Florida. West Virginia moving the football now at their own 48. On first down, it's Devine again and again hit in the backfield. That time shooting in from the strong side linebacking post, Jory Johnson a loss of four. Well, Jory Johnson filling in for Scott Luchas. He's a guy, look at the penetration in the backfield. That's how you take on a fullback. You explode through him into the running back. That's how it's done. That's playing a tenacious, aggressive run responsibility. Again, Edsel will not play Lutris until he's 100% healthy, and you can see why he's not worried about it, because Johnson handling the job just fine. Second down and 14. Brown throws, caught at the 45, but hit immediately. Alric Arnett. As Greg Lloyd wraps him up, a gain of just two. We talked about one of the keys for this UConn defense was great tackling. So far, they're doing just that. The only guy that's caused them any problems at all was Jarrett Brown in the pocket when they lose contain and his ability to get around outside. And defensive head coach Hank Hughes said this week, you know, we got to take time to mourn Jazz, one of our defensive brothers, but if we can play well, that's the best way to celebrate him. And so far, they have. Third down at 14. Two receivers to either side. Brown sets up in the pocket, throws it to Alric Arnett. Brown's Caught at the 49, Arnett. quickly covered up, a gain of four. And West Virginia hearing some boo birds here at Milan Pushkar Brown. Stadium as they're forced to punt again. Well, these fans are used to seeing this offense run all over the field, up and down against people. And they've done it against Connecticut as well. Because they have not fared very well here against West Virginia. West Virginia rolled up 66 points against them in 07. Kozlowski comes on again for his fourth punt of the day. And it's Nick Williams standing back at the 10 for UConn. Actually, this will be Robert McLean. He'll attempt to return it. Gets to the 25. And a 32-yard punt for Kozlowski. Jasper Howard Gone at the age of 20, he is going to be memorialized for two more seasons inside the UConn locker room. We'll hear more from the coaches and players when we come back. Both teams wearing Jasper Howard decals on their helmets today. We're tied at 7, 6.31 to go here in the second quarter. Let's hear more from head coach Randy Edsel. Everybody's affected because of the because of the type of young man that he was and the personality that he had and and what he was making of his life. That's the thing that's 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 sad. Where he came from and the strides that he made, you know, as a as a person, as a student and, and as an athlete, to know that the direction he was going and, and some of the things that he would have been able to accomplish if he was still here with us. That's the sad part of it. But as we try to tell our kids, nothing in life is guaranteed and life, uh, life is precious. Not playing this game was not even discussed by officials from both schools this week. Edsel said that Jazz would want us to play. Yeah, sometimes that's the best medicine. First down at 10 for UConn. Six and a half to go first half. Tied at seven. Endress, a little play fake. It's caught by Dwayne Difton. Nice initial move, but good pursuit by the defense. And it's a gain of two. Let's go down to Beth. Well, guys, among the tributes paid around the country to Howard is by his former high school teammate, Chris Chancellor, who's a standout defensive back for Clemson. Chancellor will be wearing the number six jersey to honor the man he played with for a couple of seasons down at Miami Edison High. I talked to him this week and he remembered his friend as energetic and outgoing and always quick with a smile. 
His game today at Clemson will be down in Miami, where they both played their last team together as high schoolers. Clay? Thank you, Beth. And here's a first down for UConn, Kashif Moore. And that's a gain of 32 as UConn moves into West Virginia territory. West Virginia is very concerned with play action pass from Connecticut. You see Cody Endress take one right in the chops, but watch him stand deliver and put the ball right on Kashif Moore's numbers. Under pressure, under duress. Watch him stand in the pocket, take that hit. First down and 10. That was the longest play of the day for UConn so far. We'll go back to Jordan Todman, and he'll pick up just two. Dave, there was some questions about whether Kashif Moore would even play today. He was with Jasper the night of, of the uh, incident on campus last Sunday, and what a what a lot of strength and determination he is showing today. Yeah, he certainly has just to be on the field, uh, and this whole team has. But I, I think it's. Uh, like Coach Edsel said, it's their way of paying tribute to Jazz by playing with great heart, great passion, just like he played the game. Second down and eight. Endress has time. It's complete. That is Marcus easily gets away from a tackler, and he's inside the 15. What an effort from Marcus Easley, a former walk-on who has had back-to-back 100-yard -back receiving games. Give him 24 there. And Marcus Easley kind of rediscovering himself as a senior. You see he's a long lady, kind of rangy, big target for Endress, and he's really become his go-to guy the last couple of weeks. Look at that, breaking a tackle, making a play. Love it. First Husky to have back-to-back 100-yard -back games since 1999. Here's Andre Dixon. He'll hop inside the 10-yard line. Gain of two. So UConn knocking on the door here with 4-10 to play in the first half. Find themselves now down inside the 10-yard line. This is where a physical football team knows how to get it done. You know, we're going to line up. They got Dixon in the game. The play-action pass is very convincing because how they run the football in this area of the field where you can utilize all those things at your disposal. Crowd comes alive again here on second down and eight. See what Connecticut has done inside the red zone. Endress trying to fire out to the flat again, intended for easily incomplete, but a penalty flag down, and we haven't had too many of those today. Yeah, it's been a pretty clean game penalty-wise so far. And that time, Cody Endress just got a little excited. Personal foul. Offense, number 57, hands to the face, 15-yard penalty, second down. It's Mo Petras, the center. You're going to see Mo Petras again. He's just trying to throw and go on the defensive line, and that did not look like a penalty to me. Your hands are going to gut up in defensive lineman's face, and that's just a part of playing offensive line. What you got to do is replace them. That time, what you call a throw and go, you jerk down the defensive lineman while you try to release downfield for a screen. Mo Petras, a fine football player for, for UConn, a guy that th they think has a bright future. And he started as a left guard last year, now playing center. That was just the second penalty of the day combined. Sherman and Todman back out there. And it is Todman. It's past the initial wave, back to the 20. That's a gain of three. So obviously, Anthony Sherman's okay, the fullback dinged up earlier. And you'll see Todman now and, and UConn just running low. Little counter lead draw up there, trying to create some space for Todman up inside the line of scrimmage. And that time, uh, West Virginia's defense ready to answer the call. But that penalty, boy, a critical situation down inside the 10 yard line. Now they get pushed back. We'll see if they can make something happen on third down. Third and very long, third and 20. This is the ninth conversion attempt on third down today for UConn. And four of eight, Endress throws. Nobody home on the near side. Kashif Moore, the closest receiver. And the field goal unit will come out. Looks like Kashif Moore had a hard time getting his head around up. He stumbled coming out of his break. But Endress and his timing were off just enough to make an incomplete pass on third down. So we'll see David Taggart. Six of nine on field goal attempts this season with a long of 47. This will be from 38 and for the lead. It's
It's good, and UConn goes in front for the first time today. Let's check in with Rob Stone in the studio. Guys, we don't mess around with field goals. We're all touchdowns between USF and Pittsburgh. How about for Pitt? Three drives, three TDs. Deion Lewis, his Big East leading 11th touchdown of the year. Panthers up 21-7. All right, we'll uh, check in with Rob again, of course, coming up at the half. And don't forget, get caught up on all of the day's action on SportsCenter U tonight, starting at 1.30 a.m. on ESPN UHD. You can also catch us all morning on Sunday. That's a great way to start your Sunday morning, getting um, at 6 a.m. Nothing better. <laughs> Total recap of the day in college football on Saturday. And yeah, you better watch out for Pittsburgh. Uh, Frank Signetti, new offensive coordinator there. He's got Deion, Lu Deion Lewis and Skull playing a very high level. Dave Wanstat has got that team going. They're physical on defense. They're going to be a team to contend with. Can't say enough about how UConn has responded here today with everything that has gone on this week. They get down after the opening kickoff, but now lead it here late in the first half. Mark Rogers on this return for the Mountaineers to the 20. Stood up, pushed back. And West Virginia will try to get something going offensively. It hasn't been pretty. They have punted four times today and have also been picked off once. Yeah, they came into the game minus five in turnover margin. Had improved over the last two weeks at coming in after the last two weeks at plus three. And so they started to turn that tide a little bit. Find themselves down in the turnover margin right here today. That interception by Jarrett Brown over the middle by Robert Vaughn. Here's Bill Stewart, second year as head coach. He has been extremely gracious this week to Randy Edsel and the Yukon Huskies. Brown throws it out to the flat, juggled and almost intercepted. Noel Devine tried to haul it in. Robert McLean almost picked it off. Now they're trying to find some different ways to get Noel Devine the football, run him out in the flat. Again, he just takes his eye off the ball. Boy, it dangles up in the air. McLean, a chance to take that bobbled pass or pick six the other way. McLean having an excellent senior season. Tied for sixth in the nation with four picks. Almost had five there. Second down and ten. Jared Brown, Noel Devine, Jock Sanders, the stars for West Virginia have been held in check today. Play fake. Again to the flat. Here's Sanders, and he's got room to operate. Nice move at the 25 and down at the 30. He's got a first down, a gain of 12. Coming up at the half on Sports Center, you, Rob Stone, and Matt Stinchcomb will get you ready for that big keg of nails game between Cincinnati and Louisville. Of course, Bearcats trying to stay undefeated. Also, big day in the SEC. and more on Jasper Howard and that's what West Virginia has to do right now they got to get the ball in the hands of Jock Sanders and Noel Devine be creative force UConn defend the whole field after a gain of five second down and five two minutes to play in the half Brown feels the heat throws on the run incomplete boy he has just not been dialed in so far today incomplete to Sanders there well, because he's been under pressure by that UConn defensive line. The few times they blitz, it has been effective. He's starting to feel that. You see him slide up in the pocket and, again, throwing the ball kind of in an unbalanced fashion, throws it a little wide and incomplete to the receiver. And Mountaineers facing a third down again. Here comes the heat again. Brown steps out of a tackle. Lobs it up, has a man caught at the 45. Elric Garnett. Boy, that's not how you draw it up, but Bill Stewart will take it right now. A gain of 23, and West Virginia keeps this drive alive. Again, UConn brings pressure, and this is the third, maybe the fourth time that they miss a clean sack on Jarrett Brown. Two guys miss him. He extends the play with his legs and finds a way to just kind of drop it to Elric Garnett. Brown, of course, did not play most of last week. He left after the opening series, suffered a mild concussion. He's been slow in getting started today. Please put one, four, six on the clock. 
They'll add three seconds to the Thank clock. You. Jared Brown does have an excellent arm, and that takes a lot of arm strength to do what he did right there, to throw it on the run off balance. Yeah, off balance and, and some touch to kind of just dink it in there. A first down for West Virginia from the 42 of UConn. Brown, and that should have been caught by Sanders. Talked earlier about how Sanders was having such a great season up till today, and he has been very quiet, and that was all on him. Well, that time West Virginia offensive coordinator Jeff Mullen again trying to quicken up the throw. Quick throw outside, give Jared Brown some time, shorten the drop, get one out there quick to Jock Sanders. He's got to hang on to it now. 31 plays for West Virginia, just five have gone for 10 yards or more. That is atypical for this big play offense. On second down, Brown again off his back foot, gets it back to Sanders. This time he's got a first down and more. Now just as we say that, Jock Sanders breaks loose. Give him 31. Again, get the ball to Jock Sand Sanders in space. They run this little hitch screen to Sanders right in the face of the blitz. And you see it. You miss one tackle on Jock Sanders, he has the ability to take it to the house. Divine. Penalty flag down. Hold it. Number 74. 10 yard penalty. First down. And that's going to go against Joe Madsen, the right guard. For West Virginia, the first penalty against the Mountaineers today. And at a critical time, they get some momentum going. Looks like the game of their offense just kind of sped up real quick. As Devine had that handoff, was around the corner, he smelled the end zone, was trying to get it there. The penalty in the red zone, critical situation, usually costs you points. The offensive line replacing four starters from last year for West Virginia. So now first down and 20 to the flat. Devine has it inside the 10, driven out by Bleedy Ray Wilson. West Lions with a good block downfield for West Virginia. It's a gain of 13. And this does two things. It gets the ball in the hands of your playmakers, but also gets the ball out there quickly to help protect your quarterback from the pass rush of UConn so far. Longest drive of the day so far for West Virginia. It's gone 74 yards. They're trying to cap it off with a touchdown. Under a minute to go here in the half. Brown steps up in the pocket. He's going to take it himself. And tiptoes out of bounds at the five-yard line. A gain of three. Smart play by Brown. Uh, smart play, not forcing the ball into the end zone. Again, that pressure by the UConn defensive line. Jarrett Brown's aware of it. He looks down into the end zone, doesn't see anything he likes. Uh, great defense in the secondary of UConn. Jarrett Brown runs it out of bounds, living for third down. They can pick up the first down at the one-yard line. Third and four. Long snap count. Brown out of the gun. Again, feeling the pressure. Steps away to the end zone. Touchdown. Jared Brown from five yards out here late in the half. And West Virginia goes back in front. The defensive line of UConn, that's a fourth or fifth sack. They miss on Jared Brown. They got a clean shot at him. Look at the defensive lineman. Reyes can't catch him. He tucks it and finds the corner of the end zone. That's tough to defend. That'll slow down your pass rush. Next thing you know, your D-line coach starts telling you, hey, hey, just slow down, contain them, contain them. And then it takes the pressure off your quarterback and offensive line. And the extra point is good. How about Wes Lyons on that drive, Dave? The big receiver, the senior, he's six foot eight. He threw a couple of great blocks on that series. Yeah, when your quarterback turns into a runner, you got to turn around and now become a blocker down the field. Those are the kind of blocks that lead to big plays or touchdowns. Now don't forget our coverage of college football continuing later today on ESPN UHD as Louisville takes on number five Cincinnati without quarterback Tony Pike. We already know he will not play today. 
Cincinnati, one of the remaining undefeated teams in college football. Of course, Texas on that list. Florida and Bama both from the SEC. Some good teams. Of course, TCU taking on Brigham Young today. Another big one, Boise State right there. But what about the Big East? Three teams in the top 25 of the BCS standings. Both of these teams feel that today could dictate the way they play the rest of the year going forward. Certainly UConn, you can understand why they feel that way. Low line drive kick that's going to roll. Mishandled at the 23, now picked up. This is Robbie Fry. An excellent return man for UConn into West Virginia territory. Second in the Big East in kickoff return average. He gets 33 on that bring back. You don't think about a guy wearing number 44 as a kickoff return guy. A fullback, tailback kind of player for him. But look at the delay. It causes the coverage team to relax a little bit. And no hesitation by Fry to take it up the middle, find the soft spot in the coverage team. So Cody Endress and the UConn offense come back out with 40.3 seconds to go. Down by four, and you can see the timeout situation. They have one remaining here in the half. What's the strategy here, Dave? You try to get the ball down the field, work the edges, know how many timeouts you have left, and try to get some points before the half. Andrus, it's complete. Marcus Easley. And he's got a first down, and more importantly, stops the clock at 32. Gain of 13 on the play. UConn with one timeout left. Good heads up play by the senior walk on Marcus Easy. Get what you can get and get out of bounds. Tadman to the right of Endress. And he'll get it. Swings it around on the left side. Good blocking in front of him. He's close to another first down. And again, stops the clock with 27 seconds to go. A gain of nine. Yeah, it looked like Tommy had a chance to take it up inside. But again, heads up play. I don't know if I get inside to the end zone. Let me work to the, get to out of bounds and stop the clock. Taggart, the field goal kicker, already has a successful field goal attempt today. But UConn thinking six here. With 27 seconds to go. Number 17 of West Virginia. Second down and one. Andrus, plenty of time, it's complete. Caught by Kashif Moore, touchdown UConn! A 17-yard touchdown reception for Kashif Moore, who has been through so much this week. You talk about effort. Look at Cody Andrus, too. He knows he's got Kashif Moore come back over the middle. Hey, you've got to score. Get down. Look at the effort. Look at him sell out for his team, for Jazz, and find a way of getting in the end zone. Taggart comes on for the extra point. 17-14 Connecticut goes back ahead. And look at that smile on Randy Edsel's face. First touchdown catch of the year for Kashif Moore, and you know who he's dedicating that to. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and even more importantly, answer the call, West Virginia. You saw West Virginia all of a sudden get an idea what they want to do offensively if they scored that last touchdown. It's get the ball in space to their playmakers, and then let Jared Brown take care of things when things break down. But watch Cody Andrus. Again, the offensive line, the protection they're providing, Great so far against West Virginia. And there's Kashif Moore. Dip in, dip out, and look at the effort to get in the end zone. Yes, I can fly. I love it. It is so good to see smiles on that sideline. Yeah, there's no cure uh, for those kinds of pain. But I tell you what, when you get a group of young men committed to doing something and playing with emotion, and, and it's just a great thing. And, and football is that, that sanctuary for UConn here today. So now West Virginia with 20 seconds to go in the half. Finds themselves behind again. Tavon Austin already a kickoff return for a touchdown. Will be stopped at the 27 this time. 
14 seconds to go. And Kashif Moore being joined on the bench by Dwayne Difton. Difton among the UConn players hit hardest by the news on Sunday. Jasper took Difton under his wing. And uh, Jasper Howard was really mentoring Dwayne Difton. And now uh, he and Kashif sit side by side there on that sideline as UConn has gone in front late here in the first half. And Difton, one of those young, talented recruits out of Florida, him and Jazz, would they go out every day in practice trying to beat each other one on one? Howard's such a competitor. Six seconds to go on the play clock. They get it off, and down goes Jarrett Brown. That pressure has been intense today by that UConn front. Lindsey Witten gets to him for a loss of seven. That time, Lindsey Witten said, I know, I know one way to make sure I don't miss. I'm going to jump on your back and throw you to the ground. Great effort by Witten. That's his 10th sack of the season. Witten second in the nation in sacks. And that's how the first half ends. Let's go down to Beth, who's with Randy Edsel. Thank you very much, Clay. Well, one of the big stories, Coach, was your defensive effort. Why were you so successful in bottling up their big guys for the most part? Just like I said before the game, we're playing every play like it's the last play we ever got to play. And I think there's uh, some motivation because of Jazz, too. And, um, you know, it's just we got to stop the quarterback, though. We, got, we can make more plays, but he's an athlete, and he's making some plays on it. We just got to keep the intensity up and just keep playing every play like it's the last one we're ever going to play. Well, there could have been a lot of trouble after that early kick return. How did you get, keep the guys composed over there on the sideline? It's just the type of guys we have. they got great character, great resolve, and they know it's a 60-minute game. You know, the game isn't won in the first 10 seconds, and we just try to preach those things, and they just got to keep playing until it's 0-0, and we'll see what it, what, what it brings us. Thank you, Randy. Clay? All right, 17 14 UConn at the half. Now let's go to Rob Stone in the studio with Sports Center U. The Connecticut football team hit with a tidal wave of emotions this week. And in a big game in the Big East at the half on the road, leading West Virginia by three. We met with UConn head coach Randy Edsel yesterday, and he talked to, about the tough week that he and his program has had. Arguably the toughest week in his coaching career. What happened on Monday night in our locker room, I, I've never been involved in anything uh, like that before. To go and pick the parents up that uh, afternoon at the airport and then, you know, get them to uh, St. Francis Hospital where um, uh, Jasper uh, ended up dying, uh, and then taking them to the medical examiner's office and uh, to go see Jasper. And then, but coming back to campus, um, you know, I didn't know the players were having a, a prayer service and their own vigil, you know, that uh, that night. And uh, so when I came back on campus, uh, Kashif Moore, uh, wanted, they wanted to see the parents. And I said, well, we'll be back. And I called them and told them I would be there in about 15 minutes. I said, what are you guys doing? They said, well, we're going down to the, uh, the facility, Burton Family Football Complex, to, uh, you know, have the prayer service. And I said, well, why don't you come upstairs? So I've got the folks there, and I had the rest of the coaches have a chance to uh, visit with the family. And then uh, about six or eight of the players uh, came in and spent time with the family and mentioned some words. I said, well, let's go down to the locker room and just see, see the other players. So we go down and um, uh, into the locker room and come around the corner, and all the guys were there. And you know, I introduced the family, and you know, we just had a lot of kids that lost it. And uh, uh, and Joe Angela uh, and uh, you know his dad went around to all those kids that were sobbing and, and crying and uh, comforted them and just said, hey, uh, it's nobody's fault. Uh, nobody could do anything about that. Uh, this is what the Lord wanted uh, and continued to talk. And then they said a few words to the whole group and, uh, and their uncle was there and he, he talked as well and uh, then went around and they just hugged every young man uh, that was there. And then we all proceeded from there to walk down to the student union where they were holding uh, Jasper until the ambulance came and uh, had a vigil there. And um, uh, But again, the parents told them that this is what Jasper would want, that he would want for them to uh, go and play and to play, you know, every play like it's the last play you're ever going to play because that's the way he played. An important game in the Big East. Connecticut leading by three 
at the half. Alongside Dave Diaz and Fonte, I'm Clay Mathic. You didn't know how UConn was going to come out today, Dave. Uh, they withstood an opening kickoff return for a touchdown, and they have the lead here at the half. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it certainly is because no one could tell how the team was going to respond coming to this game here today. But great effort under great leadership by Randy Edsel. Let's take a look at the first half highlights, and it started with the opening kickoff. And brought back by Tavon Austin, 98 yards for the score. Yeah, one of the playmakers for the Mountaineers that made a play in the first half, and that was on opening kickoff. Uh, the rest of the West Virginia offense has been silent. Well, you have both offenses having trouble at times. And the defense for UConn, exceptional. There is Robert Vaughn with an INT. Yeah, Robert Vaughn on the pick, and that's been, that came from pressure by their defensive line and blitz package against Jarrett Brown. Harassed him all day, missed some sacks, but certainly caused that turnover. Nice drive by UConn. You can see Randy Edsel happy after the touchdown by Jordan Todman. Jarrett Brown, the West Virginia quarterback, gets loose inside the 10. Well, he's been the leading rusher for West Virginia in the first half of this ball game. He's a guy that's big and strong and difficult to bring down. Boy, you've got to wrap him up if you're UConn. Biggest play of the day for UConn. Biggest play maybe of the year. Kashif Moore, emotionally drained from a tough week, scores the go-ahead touchdown. Hey, 20 seconds left in the half. They find a way to get another touchdown on the board to take the lead going into halftime. Let's take a look at the first half stats and what stands out to you. Well, to me, it's a lack of rush yards by West Virginia, in particular by Noel Devine and Jock Sanders. Those are two of the most dynamic runners in college football, and UConn has shut them out, shut them down almost completely in the first half. Let's go down to the sidelines of Beth Mowens. Well, thank you, Clay. Well, uh, alluding to what you just spoke about, Dave, Coach Stewart was a little more pleased that they were able to find a way to get Devine some more touches on their last scoring drive. But then the disappointment from allowing that last touchdown for Connecticut. He talked about playing much more physical, playing mountain football, and he reminded me that they were down last year against UConn and find, found a way to get the character back into the game and what he called outstraining the opponent in the second half. They're going to try and find ways to get Sanders and Devine involved here in the second half. You know that. They are just one play away from breaking it. Yeah, and that's a good thing uh, for West Virginia. Is those two guys have the ability to take it to the house at any moment. You miss one tackle. And we saw a little bit of that towards the end of that second quarter before the half of them getting the ball to them in different ways. Quick throws to take away the pressure from UConn's defense and get the ball to Devine and Sanders in space where they can break some tackles and make some plays. Turning point for West Virginia here today. Their toughest games, Dave, are still ahead. And they've got five games left after today, all in the Big East. Tough ones on the road at South Florida and Cincinnati. And, of course, the backyard brawl against Pittsburgh looms on November 27th. So a win here protecting their home field is very important. No doubt about it. And West Virginia, you know, fast starting football teams within the game and within the season. They got to finish strong. They got a tough schedule to do that against, especially that game against Pittsburgh. That's going to be one heck of a football game. Bill Stewart. Third straight game wearing that sweater vest. Uh, you know, they say that baseball players are the superstitious ones. You see it more and more in college football, the superstitions that run. Uh, yeah, it sure does. And he calls it moxie or mojo. And, and when something feels good and good things happen, Boy, you're afraid to change something sometimes. And, and Coach Stu, he's one of the uh, one of the good guys in the game. Outstanding really football is. coach. Great, you know, we're talking about Randy Edzo as a leader. Uh, coach Stu, uh, one of the great guys in the game. Great teachers. Another yeah. great leader for young men as well. No question about it. UConn will receive Jordan Todman and Robbie Fry back to receive this kick from Josh Leiter. And it's Robbie Fry. And an excellent return in the first half. And a good one here. Spins at the 35. And down at the 40, good field position for UConn to start the second half. That's a 31-yard return for Robbie Fry. <laughs> Robbie Fry once again at a time when their offense did some good things at the end of the first half, and now he, he gives them great field position to start the second half. Look at that. No, no miss, no more about it. He's just taking that ball straight up the gut. Good blocking by the guys on his kickoff return team. So UConn. Their first series of the half. There are the numbers from Cody Endress. Jordan Todman is the lone setback. And on first down, he'll get it, but hold on. Penalty flags come in. 
And a false start here on UConn. False start. Offense. Number 94. Five-yard penalty. First down. Connecticut has led in every game at the half this season. But I told you before, they've got a couple of losses to North Carolina and Pitt, games that they feel they should have won. We'll see how they finish here today. Well, part of their problem is being outscored 31 to 55 in the fourth quarter. Second half has been key for the Huskies. First completion for Endress. It's out of the backfield to Todman. Nice move. And out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That's a gain of 12 for Jordan Todman. He was impressive in that first half. Todman had 11 carries, 59 yards, and a touchdown. You see the close losses for UConn, and you and I did that North Carolina game. Boy, that was an unfortunate ending for the Huskies. Yeah, safety in the end zone on a holding call. Boy, I haven't seen that happen ever. Todman, he's got the first down, and he's loose. Inside the 35-yard line, Robert Sands, the free safety, runs him out a gain of 16 as UConn has a lot of momentum here to start the See half. See that offensive line to start to stretch that West Virginia defense, and that's what Todman does. He plants his left foot, and at some point, he turns north and south. Todman creeping up to his season average of 84 yards. On first down, Endress has time, has a man, incomplete. He overshot Brad Cunyu, the senior receiver. He's one of the veterans of that receiving core, and that was almost a big play for the Huskies. Yeah, they, they sent Cunyu up the sideline. Again, play action pass on first down for Connecticut. Big concern to West Virginia. That time they're there, but Endress had a chance. He had a chance to drop that ball in there, just missed it. Is West Virginia getting the kind of pressure that they need to? Uh, they haven't pressured them too much. That offensive line's done a good job blocking up those guys. Second down and 10. Inside handoff. Dixon steps out of one tackle in the backfield. Stiff arm and brought down. Running laterally. Gaines no yards in that play. Anthony Leonard, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. Now West Virginia defense. It's the seventh year of a 3-3-5 look under coordinator Jeff Castile. Castile planned on following Rich Rodriguez to Michigan, but stayed when Stewart was promoted to head coach. And at 3-3-5, being tested today by UConn as there's a timeout on the field. And they came into the game and the number one run defense in the Big East. They play it well, three down linemen, three linebackers, and three safeties. Timeout called by the Mountaineers. 13-36 to go, third quarter. 17-14, UConn. Officials from both schools confirmed that it was never discussed that this game would not be played today. After the stabbing death of junior cornerback Jasper Howard from the UConn Huskies last Sunday, we didn't know how the teams would respond today, but both have played a very good football game, and it is close here in the third quarter. We got one heck of a game being played right here. Guys laying it on the line, 17-14. UConn, they got the ball and headed towards their end zone. Third down and 11. And the red zone success for UConn. Three of three, trying to get back inside that red zone. Here's the pass, and it's caught. And caught at the 17. Nice catch by Isaiah Moore, the team's leader in catches. He comes back for a pickup of 16. Again, West Virginia bringing pressure, but watch that UConn, UConn O-line. Pick it up, deal with it, give them time to throw the ball. And Kashif Moore, Isaiah, Isaiah Moore coming back to the football to make that catch. Go back to the ground game. There's Todman, he spins a little bit. Lost his footing. And he'll pick up just a couple of yards. Josh Taylor, the defensive tackle for West Virginia. There he is. He is starting in Scooter Berry's spot. If you haven't heard, Scooter Berry suspended indefinitely by Bill Stewart. Yeah, Coach Stu laying down the discipline and the team as well. He's being held accountable with everybody. And second down and seven, it's Todman again. And he'll pick up three more. 
Barry was arrested Sunday morning for public intoxication and disorderly conduct. And uh, like you said, Coach Stewart really sending a message. Yeah, as he said, he's in the doghouse and uh, he's not getting out anytime soon until he thinks he should or the teammates and the team captains uh, think that he should as well. Barry, the starting defensive tackle. Taylor doing a good job in his stead. Here is third down and four for UConn. Andrews complete. And it's Brad Cunyu. We'll see where they spot this. It's going to gain just one. Back to the 10, so a fourth down decision for Andy Edsel coming up. Yeah. Can you dropped his right knee down to the ground, called him down. Boy, he got to find a way to stay up and fight for that yardage. He had enough room there. I think he could have picked up the first down. So Edsel will send the field goal unit out. David Tegert has already hit a field goal today. This will be from 27 yards out. And he missed it. So Taggart, who hit in the first half from 38, misses here from 27. And an opportunity for UConn to add to their lead goes by the boards. Yep, here's a miss. You Tim, he's going to just yank it left. Misses the upright. Jared Brown is going to try and lead the Mountaineers from behind here in the second half. Let's uh, hear from Bill Stewart as he talks about his fifth-year senior quarterback. To beat the teams we had to beat that were loading the box, we had to get a vertical passing game. It's been tremendous. His arm strength is absolutely frightening. It is. And the pro scouts are coming here to shake their head and smile. So he has a gun, but he has the knowledge of where to put the ball as well. He's a sharp young man, and he's playing well. Brown today, 11 of 18 for 117. He has thrown an interception, and he has run for a touchdown. And it's been his legs and the inability of UConn to really sack him that's been the biggest part of the West Virginia offense. You see him lobbing the ball here to Arnett along the sideline. Uh, but he is a big, strong cat. He's 6'4", 220, 225 pounds. Hard to get, get down to the ground. First down and 10 from the 20. And he'll hand off to Noel Devine. He's been kept in check today by the UConn defense, but he'll pick up a first down there. A gain of 14 on that run. Alric Arnett doing a good job blocking downfield for the Mountaineers. It's just a matter of time, you think, before Devine gets busy. Here. Right, it takes everybody to get Devine back in the game. Watch Arnett, number 82 right there, come in and make a block to get Devine to the perimeter. When your wide receivers are buying into the running game, boy, big plays happen. He's a guy who can take the team on his back. And again on first down, running with purpose across the 40-yard line, a gain of eight. And Dave, remember earlier this month against Colorado, he ran for a career-high 220 yards on 22 carries. He took the team on his back that day. Yeah, he certainly did, and that's what Coach Stu talked about, his ability to, his blossoming as a person, as a leader. He said, Coach, give me the rock. I will carry this team to victory, and he did it there, and I know they're going to try and do it here this afternoon. On second and two, cuts it back, finds some room here on the near side, trying to cut the corner, and he's got the first down. One thing about Noel Devine is he is showing more patience this year. Yeah, sometimes uh, that's neat when you're a young, talented back, you're sometimes too fast to the hole. He's learned to show patience to the hole, speed through the hole. Seven yards rushing in the first half, already here in the second, 28 yards. First down and 10 at the 49. West Virginia moving the ball effectively here on this series. It's Tavon Austin. And it's <laughs> Bill Stewart recruits a prototype here to Morgantown. Noel Devine, 5'8", 176. Jock Sanders, 5'7", 178. And Austin, 5'9", 164. They're water bucks. And one trait they all have in common, they can all flat fly. Yes, they uh, they, they've got speed, they've got moves, and they're hard to catch. This offensive unit There's a little grease under the skids now. Second down and five. 
And Noel Devine checks back in, bounces off a tackle, gets the second, the second part of that defense, and he'll pick up four close to a first down. It's going to bring up third down and short. As you see, West Virginia line up in the I formation and a tight end. That was a component of their offense. It was never around before under Rich Rodriguez. And now it's a dimension that they've added to this offense, a little bit of the vertical north and south running game to complement that east and west kind of spread option running game. And it's really made them much more difficult to defend. Yeah, the offense has really looked sharp this season, scoring 30 or more points in five of the six games this season. But UConn has done a great job defensively. Let's uh, keep an eye on West Virginia here on third and one. Hand off, and it's the fullback, Ryan Clark, and he's got a first down as West Virginia will move the chains. Third and short yardage. Ryan Clark has been a big addition to this West Virginia offense. It's been a point of emphasis through the offseason. Coach Stu made sure he lined up his offense ones against ones, sometimes making sure the defense outnumbered him with 12, 13 guys on the field to make sure they learned how to pound the rock and develop that toughness. And it paid off right there. They're pounding the rock here on this series. First down and 10. Brown steps up, throws complete. Caught at the 27-yard line by Arnett, and he's down at the 21. A gain of 18 for the senior out of Belle Glade, Florida. The offensive line gave Brown plenty of time to set his feet, sit in the pocket, looking for the protection. He's able to set his feet, transfer the weight, and deliver that ball on a rope to Arnett. Five catches now, 51 yards for Arnett. That was the first pass play of this series. On first down. I'll run it again. Divine. Boy, takes a hit to the chops at the 21. And he is slow to get up. Greg Lloyd, the son of former NFL All-Pro linebacker Greg Lloyd, who played a lot of years with the Steelers just up the road. Boy, he has some big-time punch, and he showed it there. He certainly does. And his dad, he was a guy, he was a guard slayer, we used to call him. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many offensive line wanted to go to meet him in the chops. And his son, Greg, he is an outstanding middle linebacker. He's a thumper and will bring it all the time. Like his dad, maybe a little bit of a mean streak. That's what it takes. Second down and nine, three-step drop. Quickly throws it out. Brown, incomplete to Lyons. And Wes Lyons is an easy target to hit. He's six foot eight. They just uh, failed to click on that play. Yeah, that time Jared Brown, is, that big arm just kind of got away from him a little bit. Again, trying to hurry. Those three-step, that quick passing game has been a part of this West Virginia offense here since they struggled in pass protection in that first half. West Virginia hasn't been bad on third down today, 6 of 11. Another attempt coming up here, third down and nine at the 20. Going to keep this drive alive. Play clock down to two. Brown's got to hurry. I don't think he got it off. And there is a flag down. Delayed game. Offense. Number 16. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That is something a senior quarterback can't allow to happen in his offense. You miss twice there. Once it's third down. It's third down, a critical situation. It's also third down in the red zone where you have the ability to score points. You can't afford a penalty like that. Second penalty today against West Virginia. So it'll bring up third down and 14 as they mark it back at the 25. Three receivers set. Brown out of the gun. First drive for West Virginia here at the half. Play clock again. Close to expiring. Brown steps out of the pocket. Throws on the run to the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Jock Sanders. Well covered. And now we'll see what West Virginia decides to do here. And again, UConn brings pressure off the edge. Brown had the chance to escape, tried to extend the play. Looks like he had a chance to run for maybe the first down. You never know what's going to happen when he gets out in the open field. Instead, he tried to throw it into the end zone to Jock Sanders, but couldn't complete the pass. So Tyler Bittenkurt comes on. He's having a pretty good rookie year. Six of six on field goals this year. Here's from 42 yards out. And he pushed it to the right. So Bittenkurt comes up empty, his first miss of the year. 
And Randy Edsel celebrates his defense as they come off. You always talk about critical possessions and situations. Look at that. He just pushes it right. You're exactly there. And then, and that's a penalty. You know, penalty causes that. You, they talk about critical situations. What are those? Ones that affect possessions and points. And that penalty delay of game cost them both. So now UConn takes over on downs at their own 25-yard line. Dixon behind Sherman, gets the handoff. Goes straight ahead, and he'll pick up about four. ESPN News coverage of college football coming up later tonight at 7 Eastern. The Vanderbilt Commodores, they need a win. Taking on Steve Spurrier in the 24th-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks, so you know it won't be easy for Vandy. Then at 10-15 Eastern, Fresno State and New Mexico State. College football primetime presented by City on the U tonight. Second down and five for Connecticut. 6.40 to play here, third quarter. The Huskies on top by three. Andrus, a play fake, throws. It is complete. Good timing route. Caught at the 37-yard line by Marcus Easley. And then he swarmed under after a gain of nine. But UConn will get a first down. Again, play action pass on first down. And that time, the offensive line gives him time to throw. You see Andrus able to set his feet. And Marcus Easley comes back to his quarterback, presents a target, and forward progress. Picks up the first down for him. UConn has an opportunity here, Dave, to grab this game by the back of the hair. Now, how do they do it? Uh, just like they did. Keep on mixing it up, run and pass. Keep them guessing on first and second down. Throwing again is Andrus down the sideline. Nice catch. Caught at the 42 by Easley. That's a gain of 19 for Marcus. Having an excellent day for UConn. Again, watch the play fake inside. Look, it sucks up the linebackers. And there's Andrus again. Throwing to his new favorite target. Fifth year senior, Marcus Easley. Watch him dip inside, break it out towards the sidelines, and go up and elevate for the football. That's He's six his, foot two. That's his fourth catch today for 68 yards. First and ten inside the West Virginia Territory. Todman. And he'll gain four. And that's the same action as those, both those play action passes came on first down. The fake the lead draw up inside or the ISO play up inside. This time they hand it off to Todman and see him push that pile to pick up four dirty ones. I love it. That's a guy that can run outside. That's learning how to run inside for UConn. You see the numbers on Todman. This West Virginia rushing defense good, too. They rank first in the Big East, seventh national. Todman will try again. Another carry inside the 35 down to the 34. That's a gain of three. West Virginia allowing just 80 yards per game. So UConn knew coming in, Dave, this was not going to be easy on the ground. Yeah, it was West Virginia's strength against uh, UConn's strength. Their ability and and characteristic of running the football. They're a run first team against the best rush defense in the Big East. Right now, UConn's winning that battle. Third down and two. Todman. And he is going to be close to a first down. West Virginia thinks they stopped him short. Ball comes loose. Turned over. West Virginia recovers. And now. A turnover apiece as Sidney Glover recovers. Looked like Todman was fighting for a few extra yards. That's when it happens. Ball security. Keep it tight. Todman again stretching the ball to the outside. Watch him turn north and south. Here come the bodies. Hard to tell when that football came out. It's on the further review. I'm going to look at this one again and see if Todman might have been down before that ball came loose. Here's another angle. It is under review. Remember, the replay officials are looking at the same shots that we're looking at. His body is up in the air, and I don't think his knee was on the ground. And remember, it has to be indisputable visual evidence, as you see right there on that replay, of Todman going down. As he jumped up in the air, the knee did not touch the ground. And again, uh, 
tough for them to overturn that call, I think, by those camera angles. Turnovers have been a, a real problem for West Virginia, not so much for UConn. Yeah, UConn came into the game at plus five, West Virginia at minus five. And it was a quick decision. Here's the call. Review. The call on the field stands. It's first down for West Virginia. And you're right. Indisputable visual evidence. There wasn't enough to overturn the call on the field. And you see the uh, most turnovers forced since 01. West Virginia outstanding at that. You want to see Virginia Tech, Oklahoma also on the list. And that's an attacking style of defense they play here. They are coming after you. Without, this one's going to may cost UConn instead of getting points. We'll see if West Virginia can convert it into points. Noel Devine out on the field next to Jared Brown on first down. And he'll get it. Straight ahead as West Virginia keeps it on the ground. 4.20 to play here in the quarter. Lindsey Witten, the defensive end who had a sack in the first half, makes the tackle after a gain of two. Had one sack and missed at least two others. He's yeah. been in their backfield an awful lot, and that time made the right play on Devine on that little read zone inside. Witten has really answered the call from Randy Edsel to be a leader this year. On second and eight, Devine wants to bounce it to the outside. He's got running room. One man to beat on the sideline. Still on his feet. And they're going to mark him down at the one. 63 yards on that run for Noel Devine, and we knew sooner or later something like that might happen. You know, at halftime, they said, we've got to get Devine the football. They came out, handed off to him early, and right when UConn thinks they have him stop, watch him dip in, dip out. Look at the block by Jarrett Brown, your quarterback, that gives Devine the edge. And once he gets the edge, there's very few people who are going to catch him. Great hustle by Jerome Jr. and Dwayne Gratz. Clark dots the eye. He gets it, and he is going to be stuffed in the backfield. Ryan Clark, the short yardage back. He has been a real asset inside the five this year. He has five rushing touchdowns. Tried to get one here, but uh, hit hard. Yeah, look at Lawrence Wilson and Greg Lloyd. Fill the hole, drop the hips, and make sure they don't give up an inch going backwards. Try again, second down and goal from the two. Brown, look at the throw to the end zone. Caught, touchdown. Tyler Urban, the tight end. And West Virginia goes back in front. And you've got your linebackers flying up to the line of scrimmage like UConn did the play before. West Virginia answers with a little heavy backfield set play action. Get those linebackers suck up and make sure they lose track of the tight end. And that's Tyler Urban for the touchdown. Tyler Bittenkurt on for the extra point. And with 2.55 to go here in the third quarter, it's 21-17 West Virginia. Excellent touchdown drive set up by the long run from Noel Devine. And then the tight end getting involved in the passing game. Tyler Urban caps it with a touchdown. West Virginia goes back in front here late in the third quarter. Tyler Urban with his third career touchdown catch. We've had four lead changes here today. Let's go down to Beth Mowens for more on Noel Devine. Well, with that last long carry, Noel Devine going over 100 yards for the day. And success this year has been as simple as following directions, according to his coach. Bill Stewart told us yesterday that Noel Devine has done a much better job running north and south this year. But as we saw on that last long run, Sometimes a little east and west can get you out of big trouble in what Coach Stewart calls jitterbugging. And we see on that last play, guys, just how the shiftiness can get him out into the open field so he can utilize that speed. Clay? No doubt about it. He had seven yards in the first half, and now 106 on the day. And here is the drive capper, Tyler Urban, the tight end with the touchdown catch. 
Now Bill Stewart uses the tight end in the passing game much more than Rich Rodriguez did. It, it was rare to see the tight end involved. A lot of that now here in Morgantown. Well it's all set up their ability now to use a tight end and a fullback in the running game too. To have a north and south running game. That's what makes that play action pass viable. Here's Robbie Fry for UConn. Hit hard at the 25 down at the 26. Bring it back 17 yards. And now the ball is back in UConn's court. Four lead changes here in a, a motion packed game in the Big East. Well, the difference in the score right now is West Virginia's ability to capitalize on UConn's first turnover, where UConn couldn't do the same just a little while ago. Joe Moore had the offensive coordinator in his first year. We'll see what he has in store here on this series for the Huskies. Little play fake on first down. Endress incomplete. Intended for Anthony Sherman, the fullback. Joe Moorhead was hired away from Akron to uh, jumpstart the passing game in stores. Uh, pass yards are up 53 yards. UConn's passing game ranked 109th last year. It's now 84th, so a bit at a time improving. Yeah, a no huddle added to the offense as well, trying to get more offensive plays in. Second and 10. And the play fake wants to throw again. This time complete, it's a first down. Nice catch, Brad Cunyu, the veteran. He's got 12. Again, play action pass. When you have the ability to run the football like UConn does, play action is very effective. And this time it's Kanye again, just hooking up right by the sticks, looking to go up, snatch the ball with his hands. And that time, Andrews able to deliver the ball on the mark. Back to the ground on first down. Andre Dixon will get two. Andrews now, 16 for 25, 205 yards passing. And a touchdown. Your impressions of the UConn trigger man today? Well, I, I think he's kind of taken off where he's left off the last couple weeks, and that's being smart with the football, making accurate passes. They don't ask him to do too much, but you know what? He's made some big plays for them when they needed it at the end of the first half, and that throw right there. High backfield. Second down and eight. Dixon. Slippery there, gets through a linebacker's tackle. And gains four. Chris Neal finally brings him down. 11 carries, 31 yards for Dixon. And that's not a bad job by the West Virginia defense as Dixon came in fresh off a 153 yard game against Louisville. And three touchdowns. Yeah, averaging five yards a carry. And that's power running. That's inside the tackles. Big third down at four here. Endress has time. Oh, his receiver slipped and it's intercepted. Picked off. Keith Tandy. The receiver slipped on the sideline and Endress throws his first interception. Endress and UConn, a little bit of victim of bad luck right there. You see him keep the ball thin, trying to get over the safety, but his receiver falls down. And you'll see him right there. Michael Smith falls down, and there's Tandy to make the INT. Second turnover of the game for UConn. Andrews has been so solid, making good decisions. Not his fault there. His fifth career interception thrown. So now West Virginia takes back over first down at 10. It's Noel Devine this time. Brought down after a gain of one. A lot of back and forth today in this game in the Big East. West Virginia, number 23 in the country, on top for now, 21-17, here late in the third quarter. He's Dave Diaz-Infante, former Denver Bronco. I'm Clay Matvick. It's been an emotionally charged game here on homecoming in Morgantown. Brown on second and ten. Has time to throw deep down the middle of the field, and nobody home. Closest receiver, Alric Garnett. So it'll be third down and long. A lot riding on this game in the Big East. Yeah, with Pittsburgh leading USF, it's really Connecticut and West Virginia. Connecticut can't afford another loss. Everyone's chasing Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh running away 
the Big East right now with three games in the hat already. Fourth one maybe today if they can hold on and beat USF. And Cincinnati coming up next here on ESPN. You take it on Louisville. Keg and nails on the line in that one. West Virginia, 50% on third down conversions today. Brown in trouble. And goes down at the 37, as West Virginia will have to punt. Let's go to Rob Stone. Well, Clay, how would number 19 Ohio State and Terrell Pryor respond from last week's loss at Purdue? Uh, pretty well, thank you. Prior to DeVere Posey, their second big play score of the day. Prior, 239 yards passing, two touchdowns, and 104 yards rushing with one score. Thank you, Rob. Meanwhile, here, final seconds of the third quarter ticking away, and West Virginia will have a lead going into the final 15 minutes. Man, this has been a good one in the Big East. We didn't know how these two teams would respond after a tough week emotionally. They have played excellent football. The Mountaineers on top by four. Number 23, West Virginia on homecoming, leading as we look forward to the fourth quarter here in Morgantown. Here's all the scoring. If you're just tuning in, this game started with a 98-yard kickoff return on the opening kick. Tavon Austin all the way to the house. And West Virginia, it appeared, was off and running dead. And then Todd in answer with a touchdown of his own on the third possession for UConn. And Jared Brown, again, using his legs to make plays for West Virginia. That time he tucked it, ran into the end zone. And right before the half, it's Endress to Kashif Moore for a touchdown, take the league on in halftime. And the only points of the third quarter, the tight end. Tyler Urban getting involved as West Virginia goes back in front. A lot of lead changes in this one. And now West Virginia to start the fourth quarter will punt for the fifth time. As Scott Kozlowski comes on, he stands at his own 22. McLean and Williams back deep for the Huskies. Good snap, plenty of time. Hard low kick. Drifting back is McLean. He'll return it from the 17 yard line. And back out to the 28. 46 yard punt from Kozlowski and an 11 yard return. Let's go down to Beth Mowens. Well, the death last Sunday of Jasper Howard, a 20-year-old football player, resonated here in Morgantown as well. And Coach Stewart and his staff were quick to rally when they heard the news, including uh, getting together to decide that they would have the pregame handshake today, that they would put the number six on their helmet, Howard's number to honor him, actually came to Coach Stewart from his son who suggested that there has been a wealth of compassion provided by all of the Mountaineer fans all week long, and especially here today, including the standing ovation when the Husky team came out onto the field. Clay? Little foul. Defense. Thank you, Number Beth. 90. Roughing the passer. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And a penalty here on West Virginia. As uh, what Beth said there, the, the support that all of college football has shown for this tragedy at UConn really has helped the healing process start in stores. Yeah, I think it has because it's inspired people to do more. You know, guys come out and play with their hearts and passion because life is precious and these opportunities are precious. And then you see what West Virginia is doing in terms of helping raise money and, and trying to find things to do in a positive way. Running on first down, it's Jordan Todd. Good field position now after that 15 yard penalty. And UConn approaching midfield. This is a critical pos possession here for UConn. They've got to be able to answer the last two possessions. They've fumbled and thrown an interception. That time they held West Virginia. Now, can they do something with the football? Put a drive together, find some rhythm offensively. Second down and seven. Andrus is going to step back into the gun. He's got Todman in the backfield with him. Play fake to Todman. Plenty of time. Andrews over the middle. What a catch at the 25. Oh my, Isaiah Moore goes up and brings it down. And that's a gain of 30 for UConn. And that was a gutsy throw, putting it between two defenders. 
Isaiah Moore going up and making a play. One of the longest passes of the day for Endress. 13.40 to play. It's Dixon. Dixon Back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard more. As George Wright, the backup defensive tackle, comes in to make the stop. And Dixon seems like he's about one tackle away from breaking something. He breaks the first part of contact, but then going down. Hasn't been all really put together. Some tough physical yards up there. On second and eight, Endless pumps. Up the right sideline to the end zone, and Cunyu can't come down with it. Good coverage there by the strong safety, Sidney Glover. Glover has uh, had some trouble with injuries, and good coverage there. I love the, the aggressive play calling by UConn. They fake the little hitch screen and send Cunyu up the side. You see him elevate for the football. He has it in the hands. He's got to try to find a way to come out come down that he may have been out of bounds anyways the great defense there by Sidney Glover number 11 for West Virginia can you a little slow making his way back to the UConn bench There's Glover led the team with nine tackles last week good job in pass protection there five and five for 13 is UConn on third downs on third and eight Endress over the middle tipped almost intercepted are they going to say he got it? No, incomplete. Dwayne Difton, the intended receiver. Kent Richardson, number 17, almost came up with that. And it'll bring up fourth down. Boy, and just throws this one on a rope. You're going to see Difton coming in. Sit down. Look, he found the soft spot. Just sit down. The ball's on him quick, but that's right in your hands. You've got to be able to convert. You're going to see it. Look, goes right through his hands. Got to find a way to come down. That one, boy, that one. Oh, they, they, they're not reviewing it. A 40-yard field goal attempt now for Dave Taggart. He is one of one today. They're going to blow this play dead. Penalty flag. False start. Offense on the 78. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. And now remember what happened in the first half. A penalty cost West Virginia on a field goal attempt. And on for a we'll see if that is going to happen here to UConn as they march this one back five yards. So now a 45-yard attempt for David Tegger. He is one of two. A make from 38, a miss from 27. Off the upright, no good. And maybe the penalty was a factor after all. Yeah, certainly could have been either way. Uh, I mean, West Virginia holds. UConn can't capitalize on their field position. A penalty does them in. It stays a four-point game in Morgantown. Taggart, no good. Beautiful campus here in Morgantown, West Virginia. And, you know, this campus is beautiful anyway, but adding to it, the colors are at their peak. The foliage is just beautiful. Ball is on us, and the colors are out in numbers here in West Virginia, Morgantown. They oh. love their football. Now Connecticut has uh, had a tough time here in the second half. A couple of missed field goals, a couple of turnovers. Now West Virginia going back to work. First down and 10 from the 27. Brown from under center. Hands off. And it's Noel Devine. He is running with more purpose here in the second half, no doubt. A gain of six there. Let's go to Rob Stone for an update. Guys, believe it or not, Virginia at 2-0 in the ACC Coastal. Leads the ACC Coastal, but they are getting waxed at home by number 12, Georgia Tech. Anthony Allen from 20 out, his second touch of the day. Georgia Tech has rushed for 267 yards already. All Yellow Jackets there, close here. 21-17, West Virginia. 
Noel Devine, and he is close to another first down. Boy, he's a different runner here in the second half. There's a gain of three. Yeah, I think West Virginia made it a point of emphasis in the second half to get Noel Devine the football more often in terms of the running game. That time, Lawrence Wilson hanging off for dear life. Coach Stu. He's uh, hoping that that sweater turns the trick again here today. West Virginia 162 yards rushing today. Many of those yards coming from Noel Devine. It's Ryan Clark this time the fullback. He is the short yardage specialist. The guy they go to when it's four downs or less and he gets six. Here's tough running right up the gut. This was Coach Stewart worked on in training camp in the offseason. Look at the guys attack the line of scrimmage. Look at the look at the power that Clark runs with. And at one point during training camp in one of their sessions they ran 46 plays of nothing but power running to see who's going to quit to see who's going to put it up for the team and he's developed that toughness he's paying, reaping dividends here today and through the course of this season. 11 minutes to go Divine again hopping to the outside takes a hit at the 45 that's where he's cut down after a gain of two Bleedy Ray Wilson number five playing Jasper Howard's corner position makes a big tackle there. And watch Ray Wilson. He doesn't come up and make this tackle on Noel Devine. Noel Devine might be in the end zone right now. See him come up, lay out, take the legs of Devine right out. And for Bleedy Ray Wilson, a lot on his plate today, emotionally and physically. Playing Jasper Howard's spot. Second and eight. To Devine. Not close to midfield. And so now another third down situation. It'll be third and three for the Mountaineers. Well, it looks like right now that West Virginia offensive line, some young guys up front, they've been improving. Looks like they're starting to take charge of that line of scrimmage. And UConn's defense starting to wear down just a little bit. Third down and three. West Virginia 50% on third down conversions today. Brown fakes the throw and wants to run. Nowhere to go. And that almost looked like a designed run. Yeah, I think that was a quarterback draw. Something he's been very effective usually when things break down and running on his own. And people want Coach Stu to go for it. So West wow. Virginia sees its drive grind to a halt. And the fans, yeah, they wanted to see an attempt on fourth down, but they're going to kick. And look at the difference in second half yardage already. West Virginia starting to get this offense going. 131 yards in the second half so far. Well, you really got the sense that a successful drive that resulted in a score would go a long way to, for West Virginia to win this football game or to at least really put UConn in a tough spot. But... Huskies are going to get the football back, albeit they're going to be looking at a long field. And that's what Coach Stewart was doing, playing the field position game, trusting his defense. 42-yard punt back in Morgantown in a moment. A four-point difference late in the fourth quarter. Game that's had four lead changes. You get the feeling it might come down to field goal kicking, and it's been none too good for either team today. David Taggart has missed two for UConn, and Tyler Bittenkurt has missed his only attempt today. That was from 42 yards. Yeah, the six points missed by UConn. Difference in the ball game right now. Missed opportunities. We'll see if it comes back to haunt either team as we get deep into this fourth quarter. Each could uh, have a chance at redemption as this game gets long in the tooth. Long field now for UConn. First down and 10. They start this drive at their own eight yard line. 8.48 to play. And they call Jordan Todman's number. And he'll pick up a couple of yards on that play. This is the worst starting field position for UConn today. Yeah, Todman uh, did a nice job of picking up yardage when he could have lost yardage there deep in their own territory. Found a way to turn his shoulders and slide through a crack to pick up a couple positive yards. 
He limped off. You get the feeling it's going to take a lot to keep anybody out today. Second down and eight. Andrus, quick fire, and it's caught at about the 14-yard line by Moore. A gain of five. Let's go to the studio and Rob Stone. Play fun one in Oxford. Jevin Sneed in the third quarter. A little simple screen pass to Dexter McCluster. Watch the little man find another gear. No, that's not McCluster. That's Ryan Mallett. The tip drill to Carlton Salters. Old Misses lead cut to seven. Third down and three for Connecticut. Endress. Nice catch. Kashif Moore, first down. A gain of five as Moore has played brilliantly here today for the Huskies. Yeah, he's come up big time for him in critical situations. That one, that third down, huge for Connecticut. Move the sticks, continued possession uh, in the fourth quarter. It was Andre Dixon kind of clearing a little traffic for him, but the offensive call rub made the defensive call to pick. from the crowd again. Trying to get behind this West Virginia defense. Endress struggles to communicate with his line. And a big hit and a short game for UConn as Dixon is brought down. Told you back in the first half that Cody Endress did not win the starting quarterback job out of camp. It was Zach Frazier, the junior from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, but after Frazier went down with an injury, Endress has come on. He has been very solid. He has managed the offense, and at times he's been brilliant in helping win games. And his medal's going to be tested right here on this possession. Second down and nine. He wants to throw over the middle. Has it complete to Kanye. He takes a shot but holds on. Keith Tandy laid into him, but it's a gain of 17 as Kanye makes the catch. And it's Endress again. Great protection on the offensive line, but look at Khan. You find the soft spot right over the linebacker in front of the safety, and Endress just drops it between the two defenders. You think about a rear end collision there. Ooh, that one hurt both players, that's guarantee you. Connecticut keeps the drive alive. Dixon checks in. First down and 10. Play fake to Dixon. Endress off his back foot, launches it up. Nice catch there by Easley, but he was out of bounds. Well defended there by West Virginia in the secondary. Andrus tried to drop it into him. They just ran out of real estate. Look at the numbers by Andrus. 20 of 33, 262. A touchdown, one interception. That one interception, his receiver fell down. But West Virginia was there to take advantage of it. Andrus was the consummate backup, always ready. Behind Frazier. And getting a start. Todman trying to reverse field. Can't do it. Hit by a wave of blue jerseys. It's a loss of three on the play. Anthony Leonard leading the charge for the Mountaineers. And West Virginia defense flying to the football. That's hustle, pursuit, and want to right there. UConn again being faced with another critical third down. And what are you looking for here on third and 13 if you're Randy Edsel? Well, there's not a whole lot of plays you got for third and 13. They got to try and create some space for one of their playmakers. Right now, Ender's got a high hand, though. Time to throw. Picked off. Intercepted by Kent Richardson. Inside the 20. Ball comes loose. Who's got it? UConn got it back. What an exchange of events there. Boy, you couldn't have said any better. What a turn of events for Connecticut. Andrus forces the ball downfield. It's third down. You can't put the ball in jeopardy like that. You're going to see him force it down over the middle late and in the air. As West Virginia's there, Richardson to make that interception. Watch it end of play. No one quits on this on either side of the field. Look at UConn come in there, and that's Marcus Easley stripping the football, causing the fumble. UConn gets it back. 
A 44 yard return by Richardson before the fumble. And with just over five minutes to go, that could have been the haymaker for West Virginia. And instead, the teams exchange turnovers. Now, there's some discussion on the field. Here's another look at that play. You see Richardson right now. Made the interception, making the play. Again, you got to keep that ball close to your body. Just a great play and a hustle by Marcus Easley, the fifth year senior, not quitting on the play. Staying involved. You see that ball loose. And UConn all over it. And they're going to review this play and see if he was down before the ball came out. And you're going to see every look we have. And you'll be seeing what the replay officials are looking at. And you'll see as easily flips him around. That ball is out before he hits the ground. And again, they're looking for indisputable visual evidence to overturn the call on the field. And I think when they look at that one, shouldn't take too much time. That was a fumble. Now that turn of events takes UConn from its own from the 39 yard line of West Virginia back to its own 10 yard line. But uh, Randy Edsel will take it if that's how it's going to stay. We'll see. Here's the call. And to further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was not down before the ball came out. Therefore, it's a fumble. First and 10 for the Connecticut at the spot of the recovery. So Randy Edsel and the Huskies breathe a sigh of relief as they're still in this one with 5.02 to go. In a strange twist of fate there in the fourth quarter five minutes this possession right here they need seven points the turnovers today now three two you count with its third turnover after that interception pass Andrews hands off it's Andre Dixon and with those dreadlocks trailing behind he'll pick up four yeah, those signature dreadlocks right there by Dixon. He really is a workhorse. He's a guy. And the more carries he gets, the better I think he gets. And he's a physical runner. He thrives on contact. And right now, UConn going to their power running game. Got a fullback in the game. Can try and pound the rock a little bit and work the play action game. Sherman in the backfield with Dixon. Second and six. Play fake to Dixon. Andrus pressured. Throws. It's caught. On that sideline, Sherman hauls it in. And it'll be a loss of two on the play. We're in Morgantown, West Virginia. Milan Pushkar Stadium homecoming weekend for the Mountaineers. An important game in Big East play. Connecticut and number 23, West Virginia. He's Dave Diaz Infante. I'm Clay Manfred. We've had four lead changes in this game. Right now, West Virginia on top. Four minutes and change to go. Connecticut has it at their own 12. On third and eight, Endress. Complete. Caught at the 27. Marcus Easley at the 30. 10. Touchdown, Marcus Easley. 88 yards. And Connecticut seizes the lead late in this game. Marcus Easley enjoying a renaissance late in his senior year. But hold He's on, there's a big. penalty flag down, Dave. I think it's against West Virginia. I saw the look on Randy Edsel's face. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 90, hands to the face. The 15-yard penalty being forced on the kickoff. Touchdown is good. Wow. Listen to what Marcus Easley's done in the last three weeks. He has two catches for 100 yards versus Pitt, six for 108, and a touchdown against Louisville. And watch him here on one of the biggest third downs of the game, bending over the middle. Look how long he is. Long strider, taking it down the sideline for the touchdown. Great effort. UConn on the board again. Third straight 100 yard receiving game for Marcus Easley. Taggart comes on for the extra point. 
Did he miss it? No, he got it. It tucks inside that left upright. And it's a three-point game. UConn goes in front. The longest touchdown pass for Cody Endress in his career. And UConn. Just an outpouring of emotion from Marcus Easley on that sideline. As they take the lead. Easily now 156 yards receiving and that touchdown. And look at that UConn sideline. There's Jasper Howard's locker. And it's going to remain a memorial for the next two seasons. Gonna keep it like that until after Jasper Howard would have graduated. And an outpouring of emotion on that far sideline as UConn goes ahead with 3.50 to play. Marcus Easley with an 88-yard touchdown reception. Tears welling up in his face on that UConn bench. It's the fourth longest pass play in UConn history. And I got to tell you, Marcus Easley strips the ball in the interception, gets them a possession back. He scores the touchdown to see the emotion on his face, the elation on Randy Edsall. I got to tell you something. That gave me a chill. Yeah. A lot of time left in this football game. 3.50 to go. That is the fifth lead change we have seen today. So don't count West Virginia out just yet. Desi Cullen to kick it off. Rodgers and Austin back deep, but this will be through the end zone. And a touchback as West Virginia will start at the 20. We'll see how Jared Brown and this offensive unit responds. There's some smiles down on that UConn sideline, Dave, but mostly everybody pretty somber over there. They've got a lot on their mind, you can tell. A lot on their mind. They know this game isn't over, but, you know, the last turn of events from the interception, they cause a fumble and score a touchdown. Brown on first down to throw over the middle, and Sanders makes the catch. Quickly brought down by Greg Lloyd Jr. It's a gain of four. Sanders has been pretty quiet today. Six catches, 68 yards for Sanders. Second down and six. Brown, another quick throw. And Alric Arnett started to run up the field without the football. Yep, he made the classic air. Arnett again takes his eyes off the ball at the last second trying to turn around and run. Goes right through his hands. And then right away, West Virginia finds themselves in a third down situation. So third down and six for West Virginia. They are 7 of 15 today on third down conversion attempts. Clock stop, 3.23 to go. Brown. Pocket caving in, steps up, fakes the throw, and he's going to try and run for the first down. I think that last little bit of effort got it to him. A gain of seven. Lawrence Wilson brought him down. Looks like he's got enough for the first as there is a UConn player down at the 12-yard line, and it appears to be Lindsey Witten. Boy, UConn and that defensive line had another chance to sack Jarrett Brown. You see how elusive he is, faking the ball down the field, knows where the sticks are. As Lawrence Wilson tries to wrap him up short of the first down, not able to do it. Brown has been impressive on his feet at times today. As they attend to Lindsey Witten, the starting defensive end for UConn. Coming into this game, he is second in the nation in sacks. He has one sack today. Only Von Miller at Texas A&M has more. And Lindsey Witten could have had at least three more sacks. Some of those, Jared Brown was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And a couple times, he just missed the layup. 
you got a clear path to quarterback. Sometimes those are the hardest ones, especially when it's a guy like Jarrett Brown. You can see he's got a brace on that right knee, and he's favoring it a little bit. But he's making his way off. ESPNU College football continuing. Coming up in just a little bit, Louisville taking on number five Cincinnati for the keg of nails. Cincinnati undefeated. However, without their star quarterback, Tony Pike, we'll see how that affects the Bearcats starting at 3.30 Eastern time. Storylines from the Big East. Pike is a no-go, so it'll be Caleros. Three teams in the BCS standings, which you mentioned back in the first half. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a dogfight down to the end again in the Big East. I'll tell you what, the Big East is so competitive. And look at Deion Lewis, a freshman, <laughs> yeah. leading the Big East in rushing. First down and 10 for West Virginia at their own 31. Brown with Savvy and Guile picking up that first down to keep this drive alive. Now, throws and has a receiver. It's Jock Sanders for an important first down. They're going to give him forward progress on this, you'd think. We'll see how they uh, end up spotting it. He had enough after the catch, but then came back, and he's going to be short. Oh, look at the time the offensive line gives him. He punch fakes. He's jumping around. You know the defensive line of UConn is still going, how do we contain this guy? And he finds Jock Sanders open for the first down. First or first down. So second and inches. Brown throws again. And it's complete. First down this time for Sanders. And that's a gain of five. Jock now has eight catches for 82 yards. West Virginia has two timeouts less also. Brown to Devine. Noel Devine. Stays on his feet. Touchdown, West Virginia. Walking the tightrope. Stays on the beam and scores. Fifty-six yards for Noel Devine. That's his second touchdown today. Came in with three runs of 50 plus yards, six for 20 plus yards, and this is why he gets to the edge. He is so fast. And look at the strength, how he stays in bounds after number 15, Jerome Jr., pushes him or attempts to push him out of bounds. That is a certain kind of balance and strength. Look, Jr. has a little angle on him, tries to get the push. He has the balance and the strength to maintain his body inside of the white line. And they're going to review this to make sure that he didn't step out of bounds. They're looking at it upstairs right now. He's good. I misspoke. I said that was his second touchdown. His last big run set up a West Virginia touchdown. That's his first score of the day. And for Noel Devine, his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. And this one appears that's going to stand up. And you'll see him tight roping look at the bounce take stay in bounds that one right there that, he is still in bounds it's this last one right there looks like his toe is in the ball of his foot is in the heel is up in the air but out of bounds I think that thing stands and to further review Nicole Sanchez on the field to touchdown One thing about West Virginia uh, that makes them so difficult to defend is you have to do it for four complete quarters. They are explosive. They came into the game with 30 plays of 20 plus yards. When you have Noel Devine, Jock Sanders, Jarrett Brown, they have some playmakers and guys that can take it to the house in a moment. Noel Devine, another example of that right there. Tyler Bittenkirk with the extra point. And it's an important one because now Connecticut needs a touchdown with 2-10 to play. And the emotional roller coaster continues. Noel Devine, his 20th career touchdown run, that one a 56-yard beauty. He you now know. has 178 <laughs> yards rushing today, and he was... He was quiet at halftime. He only had seven yards rushing at the half. He was shut out in the first half, but they came out and made a commitment to getting the ball in the second half. It showed in their first possession. And, and like I said, you know how hard it is to get 50 yards in chunks. 
he's done that's his fourth run of 50 plus yards. Let's see if UConn has one more surprise in them. 210 left. UConn has two timeouts left. Trailing by four. You see the timeouts remaining, each team with two apiece. And they will come in handy. Todman and Fry will be back to return. Josh Leiter to kick off. He has just one touchback this year. Fry, second in the Big East in kickoff return average. He averages 25 yards per return. He is dangerous. And it will be Fry from the 15. He's got a hole. Excellent return to the 46 yard line. A 31 yard kickoff return for Robbie Fry. And UConn's in business with 2.03 to go. And West Virginia tries to pooch that kick up in the air, trying to help their coverage team. But Robbie Fry, again, he is a very sneaky returner. Not the fastest guy, but very efficient in the way he runs and always going north and south. Cody Endress. 22 of 36, a career high 348 passing yards today. On first down, quick pass to the tight end, Ryan Griffin. <laughs> And it's a gain of four. With Cody Andrews again taking a hit after he delivers that football. With Ryan Griffin becoming a reliable target for him. Dixon in, second down and six. Andrews throws again, complete. Caught by Brad Cunyu. And he's inside the 35 yard line, a gain of 17. We welcome the ESPN audience joining us here in Morgantown, Connecticut, and number 23, West Virginia, the Mountaineers. Leading it by four, but UConn has it at the 33 of West Virginia. Andrews throwing here incomplete. The last couple of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. Connecticut's Cody Andrews, the quarterback, Hooking up with Marcus Easley, who's had an excellent day. Marcus Easley been a go-to guy for him all day, but then the guy they contained in the first half was Noel Devine. Couldn't contain him for long as Noel Devine takes it to the house for 56 yards and a touchdown to give West Virginia the lead. There's Bill Stewart, the West Virginia head coach, as they Mark this one back to the 38-yard line after the penalty against Connecticut. Second down and 15. Some of the storylines, miscues for Connecticut in this half. Pressure, Endress, ball comes loose. Connecticut recovers. And it's recovered by Zach Hurd, the right guard. It's a loss of six. UConn's offensive line been doing a great job protecting them all day long. But look at Zach Cooper run the hoop on Mike Hicks, the right tackle for UConn to get the hit and cause a fumble. Here's Randy Edsel, the head coach for Connecticut, calling a timeout. They have one remaining. UConn, since joining the Big East, has never defeated West Virginia. And they want to do that here today, of course, to keep their championship hopes alive in the Big East, but also they want to win one for Jasper Howard, who lost his life last Sunday. Certainly wearing their hearts on their sleeves, haven't had a whole lot of success here at West Virginia. Last time they were here was in 07, they lost 66-21. We have had six lead changes today. Third down and 21. Andrus, a lot of time, over the middle, caught, dropped. They're going to say incomplete. Ryan Griffin had it, and it popped out. Oh, my. Andrus had 
Griffin over the middle. Look at protection by the offensive line. West Virginia playing zone coverage. Griffin finds a soft spot and just delivers it to him. He just can't hang on to it. And the free safety, Robert Sands, number two, delivered the blow to knock it loose. Third down and 21. Andrus comes underneath to Andre Dixon. Well short of what he needed for the first down. Under a minute to go. And another timeout called by UConn, their final timeout. Their final timeout and their final down. Still have 13 yards to go. But I like that play, getting the ball to Dixon, picking up a chunk of the yardage, not trying to force the ball downfield. Now see what they have up their sleeve as Randy Edsel is talking to his guys and now heading back towards the sideline. Tell you what, you couldn't have asked for a more exciting football game. And the effort displayed here by these two teams this afternoon. This very well could be the final significant play of this football game. Fourth down. And 13. They need to get to the 23 for a first. Watch number 29, Marcus Easley. He's been the big play guy for them offensively. Here comes the heat. Hit as he throws. Intercepted. Chris Neal picks off Cody Endress, who was hit by Sidney Glover as he let loose. I like what defensive coordinator Jeff Castile did on fourth down with the game on the line. He brought pressure. He sent Glover. He made the hit that caused the interception. He wasn't willing to sit back and just let Cody Endress and this UConn Connecticut football team try to make a play. You see Endress back there and in comes Glover on his arm in the shoulder. No chance for that ball to head downfield. The fourth UConn turnover today, the third time that Endress has been picked off. And Jared Brown takes a knee. UConn will drop to one and two in the Big East, four and three overall. West Virginia stays on track for a Big East title. They will go to two and zero in conference play, and six and one overall. Six lead changes in an emotional game, and West Virginia wins it, 28 to 24. Final score: West Virginia 28. What a tough loss for Randy Edsel and University of Connecticut. To play with such heart to come so close and fall just a little short. Randy Edsel. With a tough week. And he is downstairs with Beth. Thank you very much Clay. Well coach it's been a very difficult week uh, around campus and with the team. Can you describe your emotions for us right now. Just feel empty. Feel very empty. Um, you know we had opportunities. The kids came out and played uh, played their hearts out. Did what we asked them to do and you know we just had some mistakes that hurt us some big plays against us in defense and had some missed opportunities offensively in the kickoff return. But you know it's a special group of kids and uh, you know we just got to take this and move forward and now uh, just learn how to play like this all the time and just make a couple of those plays when we can. What will you tell the guys in the locker room about their effort today. That it was outstanding and that they did a great job. We came up a little bit short but uh, I know uh, Jazz is proud of their effort. Not proud of how we finished but he was proud of their effort. Thank you very much Thanks. Randy. Clay. I think all of college football is proud of Connecticut's effort today. Certainly proud of how this team came out and 
face of all the emotion and everything that they've been through this last week. And no one knew what the result would be, but one thing they did know and be displayed here is a tremendous amount of heart. An amazing football game here in Morgantown, West Virginia. It goes to the home team on homecoming. 28-24 the final. West Virginia wins a huge conference matchup. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's Sports Interview. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For my partner, Dave Diaz Infante, Beth Mowens, and our entire crew, I'm Clay Mathic. So long from Morgantown. Now we go to the studio and Rob Stone. Coming up next on the U, number five Cincinnati and their starting quarterback for the day, Zach Kolaris, will tee it up versus Louisville for the old keg of nails. What are they doing putting nails in a keg? There's better uses for a keg, if you ask me. Glad you're here with us, Rob Stone. Tommy Luganbill joining us on the far left. Of course, my big man, <laughs> Matt Stinchcomb, right here as well. And uh, we, we put the wraps on this wonderful UConn effort. It ended in defeat, uh, but it's, this has to be one of those moral-type victories, how well they handled not just the game, but, but the week. A wonderful show by the Huskies. Yeah, it showed a lot of res resolve in this game. They mounted some adversity early on, that big kickoff return. That's an emotional swing in and of itself. But given the recent events that UConn's had to deal with, you saw Randy Edsel, Coach Stewart at the end of the ball game. You can see that for the entire Big East Conference, this has been a big game. They've rallied around the Connecticut team. Well, when you think of Connecticut and what they had to do just to get to this point, all of the off-the-field distractions, the tragedy, each and every one of their lives altered forever this week, and then to go into what I believe is the most hostile environment in the entire conference, on the road, cold and rainy weather, and had every opportunity throughout multiple points in this game to pack it in. Kept battling, kept fighting. It's the type of team Randy Etzel's talked about all week long. Yeah, wonderful game. Two strong programs on the rise. We stay in the Big East. Monday night football, a couple of teams that have had their issues over the course of the season. Philadelphia Eagles take on the Washington Redskins, coached by Jim Zorn, and they will be for the remainder of the season, 8.30 Eastern time for Monday night football. Well, late last Saturday night, after UConn had beaten Louisville in a homecoming game, Jasper Howard, their star defensive back and return man, was stabbed to death outside a university dance. It's been a very difficult week for the Huskies as they tried to come to terms with the loss of their fallen teammate. It's been tough for other teams across college football as well. West Virginia, for instance, had players who knew Howard well and were very shaken emotionally by his passing and by his tragic slaying. The Mountaineer fans welcomed UConn into Morgantown today with the theme, Today We Are All Huskies. Mourning the death in Morgantown for Jasper Howard. Here is the reaction in Morgantown. Players on both sides wearing things to remember Jasper Howard, who is number six. His jersey and his helmet making the trip from stores. His family saying, of course, they wanted the team to play on. Edsel said he thought his team would play its heart out, and they did, but the opening kickoff of the game went to West Virginia's Tavon Austin. Uh, just very well executed, very well blocked, but only one safety by Connecticut. 98 yards. Mountaineers out to a 7-0 lead. 27 seconds left in the half. Cody Endress, Kashif Moore, and the Huskies, the Huskies who had lost all five meetings to West Virginia by a combined score of 214 to 77, had the lead. Noel Devine has been sensational, Mark. And a terrific job of reversing direction here and getting to the sideline. Noel Devine picks up a huge 63-yard gain for West Virginia. Devine sixth in the country in rushing, averaging over 122 yards per game, and he did better than that in this one. 21-17, Endress right down the gut into traffic, picked off by Kent Richardson. Turns it all the way to the red zone, but oh, football on the inside. It means that traffic can get to it. The Huskies have it back. Huge, huge break for UConn. Amir three plays later on third and eight. Edsel's team backed up. Endress, Marcus Easley, house me. 
Oh, just a great throw over inside. And this is an individual hadn't played a great deal, but the last two games he's come on strong. He shows what great speed he had and takes it all the way. 88 yards for the touchdown. Go ahead. Over 150 yards receiving, but Divine was not finished. And Noel, Divine, a surname, also an adjective. Tiptoe, touchdown, 178 yards for number seven. Ensuing drive, UConn back in West Virginia territory, but Andrus is nailed as he throws. Chris Neal with the interception, and UConn comes up just a little short, 28-24, Randy Edsel after the game. We're a good football team. And, you know, the love and the compassion that they have for each other is unmatched and it's a it's a hurt locker room it's a hurt locker room but we will move forward we will be stronger but it's tough to take i think he's proud of us and he's disappointed that uh we didn't come out on the uh right side of the the column today but I know this, he's, he's got to give us more strength, and now we've got one more tough thing to go through on Monday. And uh, we'll get through that and uh, be ready to go next week. There is no manual on how to handle a situation like this if you're a coach, but if there were one, I would think that Randy Edsel could offer it with the leadership that he's provided his young men after this tragedy. Oh, he's done a great job, but the Jasper Howard family can be proud. The alumni of Connecticut can be proud, the coaches, the staff. I mean, this was a tremendous effort under very difficult circumstances. It was a great football game, but it shows you what college football is all about, the way the fans treated Connecticut, but just a marvelous game. The UConn players played their hearts out, and they played a tremendous game today. But I think if you look at what the West Virginia fans, their players, and their head coach, Bill Stewart, the compassion that they showed and the dignity and the respect for this situation, I truly applaud them. And we continue to offer our best thoughts, prayers, and best wishes for the entire Howard family, as well as UConn players, as they continue to grieve the loss of Jasper Howard. UConn played a terrific game. West Virginia did likewise. Mountaineers come up with the four-point win. In the SEC. Helmet sticker award. We, of course, give a T-shirt signed by us to the schools that win stickers. Let's hand them out. Get cranked up, Mayday. Clemson running back C.J. Spiller, 88 yards rushing, 104 yards receiving, 125 yards in kickoff returns, and two touchdowns in their victory over number 10, Miami. And quarterback Bill Stahl for Pittsburgh, 18-25, 245 yards, two touchdowns as Pittsburgh crushed South Florida. First ever helmet sticker for San Diego State, I believe. DeMarco Simpson of the Aztecs had 15 catches for 257 yards, three touchdowns, and the Aztecs win over Colorado State. Iowa quarterback Ricky Stanzi leading his team to a last-second victory at Michigan State 15-13 to remain undefeated for the Iowa Hawkins. And Jesse Smith, linebacker for Iowa State, 12 tackles, two tackles for loss, one forced fumble, one interception as Iowa State upset Nebraska 9-7. Ball State's McQuail Lewis gets one 301 yards rushing in their victory over Eastern Michigan. Best rushing performance of the year. And Stan Parrish gets his first win as a head coach and won a football since 1986. Long time between drinks for Stan. He gets it. And also, one other helmet sticker to give out from all of us. Yes. The West Virginia fans. Now, UConn deserves Deserves it too, but West Virginia's fans with such dignity and class and the way they handled the entire Jasper Howard affair with UConn. The Morgantown faithful, you get a helmet sticker. Our pleasure to watch your game today. We'll see you next week. I was born in West Virginia. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody in college football remembering the late Jasper Howard, especially in Morgantown Saturday. Class, absolute class by the West Virginia football fans. Of course, Jasper Howard died in a stabbing incident last Sunday morning on the campus of the University of Connecticut. Family and friends 
viewed him at a mortuary in Miami on Sunday. Funeral will be attended by the entire Connecticut team on Monday in Miami. Meanwhile, the game did not start well for Connecticut. First kickoff returned for a touchdown by Tavon Austin, but the Huskies guys never, ever gave up. Cody injures to Kashif Moore. Connecticut takes the lead. Can you imagine everything they've been through, and that's the first play, the kick return for touchdown, but you're absolutely right. They hung around. They were tough on defense, scrappy on offense. They found a way to make this a great football game. Yeah, back and forth and back and forth, and that's Noel Devine so dangerous. 63 yards down to the one. It led to a touchdown. Mountaineers trying to stay unbeaten in the Big East. They take the lead. Fourth quarter, still a four-point Mountaineer lead. Cody Indris picked off by Kent Richardson. He forced it, guys. Big break for West Virginia there. But here Until he loses it. <laughs> And Marcus and Connecticut rather recovers. That's a big break for the Huskies. And Easley, who came back and made that great effort play, goes on. And you're going to see here coming up a huge play back on the offensive side. Easley was tremendous in this football game. Two consecutive plays that just really gave Connecticut a shot to pull off the upset. 88 yards for Marcus Easley and UConn up 24-21. And he points to the sky. Ensuing drive for West Virginia. Divine. Oh, he's so good. He's so quick. And he just kind of hides back there and he finds a hole. Bang, Barry Sanders type of style. I'm not saying he's Barry Sanders, by the way. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Be careful with that. Yes, no, I'm not saying that. Cody Andrus, last chance for the Huskies. He's picked off by Chris Neal. Third loss this year for Connecticut. All of them coming when the winning team scores in the final two minutes and 10 seconds. Heartbreak again for the Huskies. 28-24 win win for West Virginia. All right, we are joined now by the head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers, Bill Stewart. And coach, thank you for joining us. And we know what Connecticut had to go through all week long. But you guys were in a bit of a, a predicament as well, an interesting situation having to play a team and welcome a team that's been through everything they've been through. How did you as a head coach approach this week for your team? Well, we talked to first and foremost just as honest as we could and as truthful as we could because it was a, a terrible tragedy as everyone knows and everyone's familiar with now and the, the, the wonderful life, you, youthful life of Jasper Howard. And, uh, you know, we just told him what, what, uh, how fortunate we were to live in this great world and play a super game and, and just have life. And, uh, you know, it was very traumatic. Many of our players knew Jasper and knew his family. Uh, we know a bunch of the coaches, and I just I don't know how Randy Etz and his staff did it, but boy, did they do a great, great job. Yeah, well, and you guys and your fans, absolute class in Morgantown. I know that doesn't surprise you at all. Now, as we were watching the game, Sean King and I were sitting together here at ESPN, and he, he said to me, you know, coaches love to give pregame speeches and, and kind of get after their team a little bit before the game, but I wonder what Bill Stewart said in the locker room before the game. What did you say to your guys? Well, I told him uh, at the first of the week exactly what I told him right before he went out. And I said, you know, we're going we're gonna to do the right thing here and remember a great young life uh, of a tremendous fallen brother in our Big East. And we may bang each other around this tough league, but we sure love each other. And that's the first thing. Secondly, I said, when we go out there, you know, we're going to stand at the numbers. We're going to have a moment of silence. And, uh, but, but, guys, as life has to go on, and, and, and he would want you to play as good as you could play. That's all we ask. And when, when, that, when that coin gets flipped in the air, then it's time to play Mountaineer football. And, uh, and that's, that, that was tough, and it was very uh, hard for our young men. But can you imagine what the UConn Huskies must have gone through this week? Yeah, Coach, and, and a great effort that they put forth. Now, you guys win the game. You're still unbeaten in Big East play, and you got a good one. Uh, on ESPN Friday night when you go visit South Florida. This is a team that's lost two games in a row now, the Bulls. When you look at USF the last couple of weeks, Coach, what do you see? Well, I see some guys that have tremendous talent, uh, and, and they, they play hard, play very, very hard. They've been a thorn on our side the last few years. We, we slipped by on, last year up here on a, on a whiteout night, Patrick White's last game at home. So I know they'll be laying and waiting for us, and, and they're going to give us their best shot. Uh, they they have to get back in the winning track, and uh, so you know I, I just see I see competitive guys, I see the same South Florida talent, uh, and, and and it's going to be really a tough game. Head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers, Bill Stewart. Coach, thanks so much for joining us on College Football Live. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to be with you tonight, man.